The weather has turned a bit frightful around the country this weekend, and Texas isn't immune. The fans at Husky Stadium may reach for an extra blanket on Senior Day. The final game of the year for the Huskies, and they have a stiff test in Sam Houston State. Husky Stadium is the site of a Southland Conference contest between Sam Houston State trying to win the Southland. They're five and one in league play against HBU, two and eight overall, one and six in league action. Hello everyone with Jeff Power. I'm Brett Dolan. Great to have you with us here today. And Jeff, Rick Shealy, the head coach at HBU, feels like his team is much better than they were in September. He wants some evidence of that. The tough part is they're playing a very good team this afternoon. Well, they played some good games here at home. They beat Nichols here at home early this year and then outrushed SFA and outpassed them on top of that early this year. SFA, one of the top teams in the Southland Conference. But this is a great measuring stick for Sam Houston State, one of the elite teams in the Southland Conference. They're in first place for a reason. Yeah, they've been playing like an elite team as of late and as far as some of their skill position players their quarterback might be as good as almost anybody in FCS football. Yeah Jared Johnson the name sounds familiar he's out of South Grand Prairie 2,638 yards of total offense including about 2,000 through the air he's been lightning fast in fact his coach says uh, light world's difference from last year that's what Casey Keeler says about his QB. Now speaking of quarterbacks for HBU it has been a revolving door all season and it's changed again today. Yeah Isaiah Hall got injured last week of course John Jonathan Fleming early, uh, early in the year was injured, so Kadarius Baker makes the start today. Great opportunity for him, and good to see number 15 back out there. You might remember he played against Sam Houston State last year and came out, had a couple completions early on in that game. Uh, I know that the Bearcats ended up winning that game 74 to nothing, but no, no doubt about it, Kadarius Baker's excited about getting the start today. Final game of the season for HBU. Meanwhile, the Sam Houston State Bearcats have designs on winning the Southland Conference. It's the Bearcats, it's the Huskies, and our kickoff will come your way right after after this. Husky Stadium is the site of a Southland Conference contest between the HBU Huskies and the Sam Houston State Bearcats. Bearcats playing fantastic football as of late. They've won five of their last six. Only a loss at Northwestern State has clouded up their conference race, but still a chance, Jeff, with wins today and next Saturday to at least have a share of the Southland Conference Championship. Yeah, just to kind of clarify, Sam Houston State is actually a big fan of Stephen F. Austin now because they beat them earlier in the year, and it could come down to a tiebreaker because Sam Houston State will not play Southeast Louisiana, the team they're tied with, and Southeast Louisiana, they beat Northwestern State. So depending on where SFA and Northwestern State end up in the conference, could dictate who ends up winning the Southland Conference as that number one seed. Meanwhile, for the Huskies, this their final game, Senior Day, just honored seven seniors, played a big role in developing this program and this their first full year. Of course, last year in the developmental season, Jeff, they started it out by playing a game at Sam Houston State. Yeah, I remember that game well. It was very historic and uh, just the opportunity to see Kadarius Baker out there and flinging the ball around. They had a couple of good drives early in the game and then it kind of got away from them. But uh, no question about it, uh, this is a uh, uh, this brings back memories about how far HBU has also come this year. To think that they've actually won a game in the Southland Conference now, beating Nichols uh, earlier this year was a huge win for the program. Uh, they've been more competitive this year, and they will continue to be more competitive as, uh, as the years go on here under Vic Sheely. Huskies getting ready on the sideline, and it is a cold day here in Houston, really across the country, but the winds whipping around this stadium. It's blanket weather in the stadium. And there's Ridgeway Frank back to return this opening kick. Ridgeway Frank, Donovan Williams, the two deep men. Travis Shin with the run up and the kick for HBU. And this one heading in the direction of Frank from the four yard line. Outside that right hash, Ridgeway Frank. He's got some special speed. He stays in bounds and finally he's hammered out of bounds with a tremendous return. Yeah, that was a beautiful turn there, return there by Sam Houston State. If you're HBU, you've got to find a way to get him out of bounds in that situation and run the right angle there. Not the way you want to get started if you're the Huskies. Well, this explosive Sam Houston State offense will come on the field. There's Jared Johnson. You see his numbers. 
And passing wise, maybe they don't overwhelm you, but he's getting real comfortable throwing the football. And he's very dangerous, Jeff, when it comes to running the ball as well. Yeah, in fact, he had 190 yards rushing against McNeese State, had four touchdowns in that game, 382 total yards. How about Donovan Williams getting the first carry from scrimmage? Thought we might talk a lot today about Keyshawn Hill, another one of their big ball carriers. Yeah, Donovan Williams is out of Belton, Texas, six foot, 212 pound junior. We're gonna see a lot of the players. In fact, Longhorn fans, watch out for Jalen Overstreet. Might remember that name. Where's number 10 now for Sam Houston State? 6'2", 212 out of Tatum. Johnson to throw the first opportunity, has a man wide open, and this will lead to a touchdown. Gerald Thomas, he caught two last week against Incarnate Word and runs underneath the first score of the afternoon. And the junior from Plano wide open. He was wide open right there, no question about it. Bang, bang, and just immediately you get to see a perfectly thrown ball there also by Jared Johnson. And if you're the Bearcats, that's how you want to get started. They're hoping to play a lot of different players today and continue their winning ways here in the Southland Conference. Luke Swimberga on to add the extra point, and he will knock one through, and just like that, less than one minute into our contest, it's the visitors from Huntsville, Sam Houston State, with a 7-0 lead over the Huskies. Yeah, beautifully designed play right here. Just good speed. You can see it's kind of a timing pattern. And uh, no question about it, Jared Johnson put that ball right on the numbers to Gerald Thompson, or Thomas. And Thomas just skates right in for a touchdown. Well, that has to be the concern for the Huskies. I mean, they have been beaten up a little bit in recent weeks. This uh, young unit learning to play every single week. It's not an excuse, says Coach Vic Sheely, but they're a little bit fatigued, a little bit banged up, and they have to face this explosive Sam Houston State team today. You want to try and keep it close early and see what develops, but the Bearcats have other ideas with that quick strike. Yeah, and keep in mind, I mean, the Bearcats have played teams like LSU this year. Uh, they've been very competitive in their games in the uh, in non-conference, but as far as the conference play, the win over McNeese was huge, 38-22 beat teams like Lamar, Northwestern State, uh, had a big win over Abilene Christian, of course the win over Stephen F. Austin in the Piney Woods uh, Bowl over there in NRG Stadium. Swimberga will kick off. D'Angelo Wallace, Stephen Thompson, the two deep men for the Huskies here on Battle Blue Day, senior day at Husky Stadium. It's a high but short kick that'll come down towards Wallace from the 12. He bobbled it, been able to pick it up. D'Angelo Wallace across the 20 before he's met and dropped. And the Huskies will start from their own 23 with their quarterback, Kadarius Baker. We touched on this in the open, Jeff. We've seen Fleming, we've seen Isaiah Hall. Thought we might see Adam Beck today, but Kadarius Baker gets the opportunity. Yeah, well, Adam Beck was listed as the starter, but it is Kadarius Baker who gets the start. You might remember, won a state championship at Navasota High School, 5'10", 195 pound freshman. He's got great size. Made the start, or came in in relief of Jonathan Fleming last year. Fleming made the start against Sam Houston State, but Baker took most of the snaps last season. B.J. Kelly starts as the running back. He will get the first carry, and you see a lot of white shirts around Kelly. And there at the bottom of the pile was Jacoby Hunter, a Cal transfer. And the one thing you notice about this defense of Sam Houston State, a lot of transfers. Meanwhile, for HBU, there are their starters, including a couple of the seniors. T.C. Jones, he signed the first letter of intent. Darian Lazard, another senior, and big Kenneth Bibbins. He scored five touchdowns this season from his tight end position. Gain of one in the first play, so it's second and nine. And Darian Lazard came in motion, then stopped and went back towards the right. Baker will roll out. He's looking for the deep ball. This one a bit under throw, and the pass nearly ended up in the hands of Wesley Lewis, almost picked by Orr, and then it was deflected in the direction of the big 6'6 wide receiver, Wesley Lewis. Yeah, Wesley Lewis, that ball actually hit him in the numbers, but it was deflected, just not enough time to, to react to it. But watch this, it's actually gonna hit him right between the eight and the one. <laughs> Couldn't quite come up with it off that deflection. Trainier Orr, good look at him. He has three interceptions this year. He scored a touchdown way back in August when they played at Eastern Washington, wanted a pick there, but it's third and long for HBU on their first drive, down seven, nothing. Ethan Fry, the wide receiver here to the left, the bottom of your screen. Baker looking in that direction, his pass instead was intended for Lazard, the senior at a pair land, and it's incomplete. Coverage was provided by Darian Flowers, a three and out for HBU, and they'll be forced to get the football 
to Sam Houston State. There's a look at those big men up front for the Bearcats. P.J. Hall, we're going to talk a lot about him. He's a fantastic freshman, two linebackers for the Bearcats, and they have some experienced corner guys in Everett and Trainier Orr in addition to Egberogi. Christian Guzman on the punt averages about 44 a kick, and this is a tremendous boot. And it will kick past Thomas. He had the touchdown in the first drive. He didn't want any part of that one. And the football will roll and stop inside the 17 yard line. Rose at the 17 yard line where it'll be first down so the Bearcats first get it back not even two minutes into this game leading seven to nothing. It's be very important for HBU to uh, not only be able to run the football, BJ Kelly being one of their players that's got 685 yards rushing leading the team, but that running game really sets up their passing game. As for the Bearcats, they're looking to do a little bit of everything today. They opened up with a, quite a few, a couple passes there on their first drive. We'll see if they don't go back more to the running style play here. It is Donovan Williams rather than Keyshawn Hill in the game. And Johnson to throw. Able to complete his pass on the flat. And you see the speed right now of Sam Houston State. Yet a Dia Lewis. Here's a walk on. At least he started the year in that capacity, and that's his 46th catch of the year. And you look at the starters for Sam Houston State up front. Donald Jackson the third. This is 36th career start. Zachary Lewis is 25th. There's some of the speed guys, including Yedidiah Lewis. And here's Donovan Williams. Made one man miss. Stays on his feet, and he's finally dropped. And it was Josh Jones from his defensive end position that made the stop, and there's your Huskies defensive starters, including Jones, number 46, just made that play. Garrett Dolan always puts up big tackle numbers for this HBU defense, and there's their secondary. Johnson with time to throw. This one's well beyond his intended target. Down the left hash. Pass was thrown towards Ladarius Brown. He's another one of those big guys, 6'4 wide receiver. There on coverage, Taylor Thompson. Yeah, Taylor, he's out of Belleville. He's had a great season here so far with HPU. I'll tell you, Sam Houston State is coming out throwing the ball around. They're, this is their style of offense, so they're kind of an up-tempo style for Coach Gill. They rush for about 227 yards a game, but their passing numbers have been on the rise as of late. There's Donovan Williams trying to get to the boundary, and he will lean forward and should have the first down despite the tackle attempt by Thompson. Marked right at the sticks, maybe a half yard pass, and that'll be a fresh set of downs for the Bearcats. Yeah, for HBU, just trying to slow them down right now. That's definitely one of the keys for Sam Houston State is their speed. Quick pass to Yedidiah Lewis, gets a block from his teammate, and he continues on his feet inside the 40. There's Garrett Dolan wrapping him up. Dolan 10th in the conference in tackles at almost eight a game. Grabbing a man in Yedidiah Lewis who will feel like at times he's catching the football on every drive. Jeffy averages almost five catches a game. Yeah, Dolan right there uh, looks like he's kind of shaking up on the play, but he's going to stay in. Second and three, zone read. There's Overstreet right down the hash. Jalen Overstreet into the end zone for the Bearcats touchdown. Yeah, right up the middle, Jalen Overstreet. Came over from the University of Texas and has a big run right up the middle for a touchdown. Over 409 yards rushing so far for him this season and 60 rushes. There's the 61st oh. right there. Well, he scored his third touchdown. And Luke Swimberga on to try and add his second extra point. Don King the third is the holder, and the kick is right between the pipes and good. 11.39 to play in our first quarter. Bearcats, two drives, two touchdowns. Huskies have their hands full today, down 14 nothing early. And welcome back to Husky Stadium. HBU leading 14 to nothing. It is senior day, but uh, the start at quarterback has been one of the uh, the hot topics this week. And uh, here's Vic Shealy about Kadarius Baker being the starter. Kadarius Baker will start for us today, and he's been uh, injured for about the last uh, several weeks. And uh, with the uh, injury two weeks ago to uh, Jonathan Fleming, then last week to Isaiah Hall, you know, getting Kadarius back this week is is very timely. And and uh, Kadarius is 
took a, over 400 snaps for us last year in our developmental year, and so it's not his first time, and this is the second time of, of playing against uh, Sam Houston, so he's seen some of these guys before, and so we expect Adairs to play well today. And good to see him out here today. No doubt about it. Went three and out on that first drive. He's ready to get the football back, but now down 14-0 to Sam Houston State. So Wallace and Thompson back awaiting this kick from Swimberiga. It's D'Angelo Wallace from the two. A lot of white jerseys, and he will not reach the 20-yard line. Special teams play made in space by Tyrell Stokes, the safety out of Colleen. Really the first cold weather game of the year for both teams. They're kind of making their adjustments right now, but if you're HBU, this isn't going to be a game where you're going to continue to watch the scoreboard nonstop. You're going to be trying to focus on committing your plays, running them correctly, running the football. That's always been a strong point for them in these two years. Baker now has Larry Day lined up to his right. He started with B.J. Kelly. You'll see a lot of rotating running backs really for both teams. And there is Larry Day. And he is being tracked down by P.J. Hall. You're looking at one of the best freshmen in FCS football. That is 18 tackles for a loss this year. And earlier this season, Casey Keeler said he will be one of the best football players I have ever coached. And Jeff, this is tre tremendous speed. Watch him get off this block and make this play. Yeah, good pressure, good push right up the middle. Got off his block and immediately found Day and took him down. Almost got his hand on the face mask there. Well, it's a good shot on that replay. He could feel that mask, and he took his hand off and tracked him down for a big loss of five on the play, so second and 15. HBU really needs positive yards on first down. They can't handle those losses. There's Larry Day. How about Larry Day with a head of steam? Larry Day was knocked down hard by Trainier Orr. Everett was there as well, but a huge gainer all the way to the 42-yard line. Well, Brett, you and I have talked about this all season long. The HBU running backs, they run hard, and they Larry Day here taking this ball right up the middle, using his blocks. Look at the speed on a mission there. Day will carry again. Picks up a couple of yards here on first down, and he was tackled by Michael Wade, the leading tackler. You see number two right there in your screen, the safety. The senior, one of two returning starters, one of two seniors, and he'll be around the football a lot today. So some breathing room, if nothing else, for HBU. Let's see if they can get some momentum. Looking at a second and eight. Baker has not been terribly accurate this year, just 41% completion ratio. And Larry Day wrapped up and thrown down, and there's Michael Wade. I told you he'd be around the football a lot, and it'll be third and long. Yeah, we can expect to see that quite a bit today. Baker getting the play call in. Baker typically will take most of the entire play clock before snapping the ball. But, uh, definitely a passing down here on third and nine. This has also been a, a play where in the past they've, they've gone to the draw play and the screen a few times. Those plays have worked out pretty well for Houston Baptist this year. When you get an over-pursuing team, you got to kind of use that against them. Kenneth Bibbins, the tight end, lined up on the right side of the line of scrimmage. Bibbins, he was wide open down the middle and said the ball was picked. Trey near Orr, he had a touchdown back in August. He'll run this one inside the 25 before he's tackled after his fourth pick of the year. And Jeff, that was just a bad read. Bibbins wide open between the hashes. The throw went to the right, and Orr read it perfectly. And you know, Bibbins is so tall. Thought there might be a chance he can get up and grab this one, but just couldn't get his hand up there high enough. But uh, nonetheless, it is picked off. And a great return right there, too, as Sam Houston State is in good shape now on the 25-yard line of HBU. Bibbins was down the hash. The pass went to the boundary to Adjun, but Orr with the pick. So two drives, two touchdowns, and great field position here for Sam Houston State. Donovan Williams. Churns forward for about 10 plus Donovan on a first down Williams. carry. I'll tell you, Donovan Williams, he runs hard as well. Picked up now what looks like it's enough for the, yard not yard quite yard enough for the first down, but a good hard run there. Still have to wonder about Keyshawn Hill. Here's a guy this year with 16 touchdowns. Jeff, he averages about 11 points a game. He's not seen any action. It's Donovan Williams again for the first down to about the 11. Williams Keyshawn Hill, one of the, the special players in this conference, whether he's a little bit banged up or whether it's an opportunity for Williams and Overstreet to get the bulk of the carries today, we're not sure. 
Yeah, and I don't, I don't think Hill is banged up. We talked to him earlier in the week. Williams stuck up by Terrell Brown the third with some help. A linebacker out of Fresno with the stop. Williams on the train. Not a lot available on first down and over straight. We'll check in for the Bearcats. So you get to mid-November, all the players are kind of got some kind of nagging injury. Everyone's a little banged up. You never know on game day, of course. Different looking formation for Jared Johnson, the sophomore with running backs to each side. Ladarius Brown lined up to the left. Brown is being targeted. The pass, had it been on the money, would have been an easy score. Pass is overthrown by Amawako was behind oh, Brown, but the pass was too tall and incomplete. Yeah, and the reaction from Jared Johnson was priceless. He just, he jumped up. He just knew right away. He, he That ball kind of sailed on him. You could see where Brown would be a handful, a six foot four, 220 pound wide receiver. He had to step the inside position but Johnson missed him. So now the Huskies trying to rise up here on third down, force a field goal try at worst from Swimberiga. Johnson, same play, this time a better pass, and it's a touchdown for Ladarius Brown. I love the call from Casey Keeler. The first play was wide open, not a good throw. They came right back to Brown. He scores his second touchdown of the season. Yeah, Ladarius Brown. Made a good catch right there. Had to kind of pull that one away from the defender and wrapped it up. But a good, strong throw right there by Jared Johnson. He's got a lot more strength this year, too. I've noticed just the time we saw him last season, a little more lanky last year. This year, he's put on some, some muscle. He's worked on his throwing mechanics and such. The PAT is perfect from That's Swim Barriga. And the Bearcats quarter. have it rolling early. The Huskies need to find some answers. 21-0 Sam Houston State. Watch this play again, Jeff. It almost looked like that ball kicked mm -hmm. loose at the very end. You see that one kind of bouncing around in his body. Yeah, I thought he had to kind of pull that one away from the defender. Let's just see one more time, different Ladies angle here. What well, great shot right here. Watch this ball start to squirt loose. Yeah, that was up high on his shoulder. He did a nice job of just basically reeling it in. Nebraska's leading Wisconsin 10 to three. Fans here at Husky Stadium on senior day. It's uh, your winter jacket or a blanket afternoon. Very quick scoring drive after that pick. Five plays, 25 yards. One more thought on that last play. Eric Omoako, the cornerback there on the play for HBU. you got to find a way. When that ball's sitting on the shoulder like that, you just got to knock it away. Once it's already made the contact with the body, you got to find a way to get it out of there. Easier said than done, though. It is. <laughs> you know, for HBU, again, they are a better team than when they started this season, and Vic Shealy wanted to see some evidence of that. Now, the first two quarters, the first half of games this year, Jeff, they've been outscored on average 32 to 12. And, you know, that's going to happen as, as you build towards more depth, more upperclassmen. But the, really the worst case scenario is to get buried early or to give up some points early and try and play catch up. It's tough to do that and playing a very good team today down 21 nothing. Steven Thompson grabbed that football away from Wallace and he'll get right back to the 20 where the Huskies will have it for their third offensive possession here this afternoon. Well, if you're the head coach for San Houston State, Casey Keeler, when I mean, you're thinking right now, you, you want to try to put this game away early as possible. So you can maybe get some of the guys in there, don't get anybody hurt, and, and then start, you know, maybe even getting ready for next week. Because they are in the thick of things. They have a chance to win the Southland Conference. They are the number one team right now, tied with Southeast Louisiana at five and one. And they play Central Arkansas next week. Bearcats have been kind of the class of the conference the last few years. Really a fantastic conference race all the way around. And here's Craig Bell. So three possessions, three different featured running backs, and the Sweeney native finds running room tough, maybe half a yard on first down. Meanwhile, Hunter Barron, the left tackle, lost his hat. He'll have to check out for a play, and C.J. Barner, number 72, comes on the field. Good old Barner. He's big, isn't he? <laughs> 6'4", 253. Just Only a freshman. freshman, yeah. One of so many talented young players gaining some valuable experience over the course of this season. Second down and 10. Bearcats putting a lot of men in the box, now backing off. Baker going up top. That pass is going to be picked again. Intercepted. 
That one was thrown in traffic. Baker would like to have it back. It was a pick by McMillan. McMillan listed as a wide receiver playing safety. Gets the INT. Well, Baker, just a little bit rusty. Hasn't played too much this season, and this ball kind of sails on him, goes a bit high. Intended for Ayanacho. And remember, there was one ball that was bobbled that could have been picked off, and there's some coaching moments here this afternoon, and Baker having one of those discussions on the sideline, but it does put this Bearcats offense back on the, the field. The previous play of an interception is under further review. They're going to review the play as Sam Houston State was hoping to snap. Baker will get on the headset and talk to his coaches up here in the press box. HBU coached by Vic Sheely. Sam Houston State, their coach Casey Keeler. He came from Delaware, a man who has been involved in eight different national championship games between Division III and the FCS level. And all kinds of success, Jeff at Delaware and Keeler earlier this week said, hey, I moved to Texas. I thought it was going to be warm. <laughs> if you told me it's this cold, I'm going to have to start looking for a job in Brazil or something. Yeah, 11 seasons at Delaware with the Blue Hens. 86 and 52 was his record. They won the Atlantic 10 title uh, quite a few times. They won it in 2003, 2004. Uh, they've had some national championships. I mean, he has been, uh, he's had a great resume and actually was in the broadcast booth last year and then decided to get back into uh, to coaching here. His, his, uh, his wife told him, hey, why don't you get back out there and coach? I know you still got that itch for it. And uh, he's done a fine job here with Sam Houston State as their head coach. Part of an impressive list of coaches in this conference and really teams throughout the course. For further review, the ruling on the field stands. Field stands. Interception. Interception. So that is an interception. I don't think there was any doubt about that. Nope. Might have been checking the spot. Sometimes they'll they'll re play it just to double check the spot of it. Russ Smith, our referee, with that indication. Okay, well he did kind of bobble it there towards the end, so I understand it now. Bearcats back with the football. It's over Street. Over Street. The Texas transfer will take it to the house on the first play from scrimmage from 48 That's yards out. By Jalen Overstreet. Good yeah, Jalen Overstreet. I mean, there's a reason why he was at the University of Texas, but left is now over at Sam Houston State, and they are getting to see the fruits of the labor here <laughs> with the Bearcats. That was a great looking run. Showed you that Division I speed right there to the outside. Yeah, two touchdowns all season because Keyshawn Hill was getting a bulk of those for the Bearcats. Well, Overstreet has had two here in our first quarter, a first quarter that still has almost seven minutes remaining. Swimberga knocks one high off the net behind the end zone. 28-0. Sam Houston State. Bearcats flexing some of their muscle early. And Jalen Overstreet showing off the wheels. Huskies need to find some answers, trailing Sam Houston State here in the first quarter, 28 0. Hey, Sam Houston State with a new head coach. Players talked about it early this year about the excitement of having a new coach on board. You know, everything was different with uh, Coach Fritz, and now it's just like a complete 180 with uh, Coach Keeler. So it's just adapting to that, and expect expectations are always the same, just to win. Um, I like the new head coach. I like Coach Keeler. Um, I like the way he runs our program. Uh, offensively and defensively, we're going to play fast, obviously, and uh, that's what we're used to, so he's a nice fit. Even with all the success they had, they bought in very quickly with what we're trying to do offensively and defensively and how to play with tempo and those things, and so it's been good. It's been, it been a, a great transition, not only on the football field, but for you know, me and the community. I just uh, I really enjoyed living in the community. That's head coach Casey Keeler. Now keep in mind, Jeff, at one point this season, his team was one and three. They lost to a division two school and things were a little bit bleak for a time in Huntsville. Meanwhile, it's D'Angelo Wallace. Wallace on the return. He'll be knocked down shy of the 20 yard line. But they had a break and really had a, a game, a couple of weeks off, a bye week and another game. So they played basically one game over the course of a month and they went back to basics and they got back to Sam Houston State football kind of a second training camp. And you talk about the fruits of their labors, then running off now five wins and six tries in conference play. Things could have gone south, and this team and this coaching staff 
would not allow that to occur. Well, and fittingly, those were a couple of seniors that we're talking about, and that was Keyshawn Hill you heard from, first of all, and then Michael Wade, a safety for Sam Houston State, both of them seniors. And, you know, sometimes when you have a new coaching staff, it just takes adjustments, and you go back to the basics to make things work. Baker's going up top again. Just a real quick pass in the flat for a couple of yards. Wasn't a lot of room available. It was Josh Reynolds who made that catch. That's made by Chad White. And by the way, Terrence Peters checks in. So four drives, four different featured running backs for HBU. That was Chad Whitehead on the reception there out of Cedar Park High School. A couple of Cedar Park players on this HBU team. Ethan Fry, of course. Gain of three on the play, so Baker will throw up top again. There's Darian Lazard, one of the seniors. Lazard with a nice run. And he'll get the first down and be tackled out of bounds at about the 35. And it's good for an HBU Husky first down. And that is catch number seven on the season for Lazard, who has dealt with a partial tear of his labrum over the course of this season. Yeah, we weren't even sure he was going to play today, and here he is making a big play, breaks to the outside. Of course, he transferred from the University of Houston. Desmond Fight made that tackle. Want to come back to Lazar, time permitting. There's the throw to Ian Nacho, and he's dropped, in fact, for a loss. We talked to Coach Sheely this week about his senior class, and again, in future years, there'll be many more than just seven out there. There aren't a lot of seniors, as you see a replay. And I said, what have they meant, you know, for the, the consistency, the leadership? And he, he quoted Darian Lazar. A young player approached Lazard earlier this year and said, hey, am I cut out? to play at this level. I'm feeling like maybe I'm not able to play in the Southland Conference. Lazard sat him down and said, listen, you're going to be okay. You're going to put in the work. It's a tough conference. But he said these conversations have taken place throughout the course of the year, and it's so valuable when you have so few seniors, you rely on their leadership. And he credits Lazard and company for some of their efforts as Terrence Peters carries for HBU on second down. Yeah, and I think that is key. He's like a coach on the field, and he's been that way since he got here. I mean, he took a lot of players under his wing. You might remember when he transferred here, there was talk about him being the quarterback for HBU right. last year. But as it turned out, Jonathan Fleming got the start, and then Kadarius Baker was the backup. But they wanted to make sure Lazard was on the field, so they moved him to wide receiver. Noble of him. Third down and five. This would be nice for the Huskies if they're able to get this first down, stay on the field, not give the football back to the Bearcats. Baker stands in the pocket, fades one towards Bibbins. Pass was a little bit out of his reach. And the coverage was step for step employed by McMillan. Brings up fourth down. And it'll be fourth down. If you're HBU, they're, they're mixing things up here offensively. The, the ground game's been there a, a time or two, but there's no question about it. Sam Houston State just got the speed. They have the brawn, the size. It's going to be hard moving the football against them. I'd like to see a little more B.J. Kelly to see if he might be able to get something going on the ground. But now Guzman will have to punt it back. He's had big numbers this year, almost 44 yards a kick. Gets away a low, tight spiral. But it'll come down in the hands of Gerald Thomas. Thomas going nowhere. Wrapped up and thrown That's down by now. Cody Moncure. Special teams play. A good looking special teams play right there for HBU. Take all the positives you can find. Good punt too. Nice spiral on that. Christian Guzman was a Southland Conference Player of the Week earlier this year. He's had to punt quite a few times. <laughs> he has, and, and now the Bearcats offense coming back on the field. Jeff, four drives, four touchdowns. They had the short field for one of those scores after a pick. They had a one-play drive on that long touchdown run from Overstreet. What do you try to do defensively for HBU to slow down Sam Houston State? Well, I think right now you got to defend the pass. That's what's burned them so far here in the game. Their secondary has been getting burned. Donovan Williams makes a man miss. Donovan Williams. Trying to get a block on the boundary. Stays on his feet. Donovan Williams is going to take this 80 yards for a score. Back-to-back -back drives, a one-play scoring drive with a long touchdown run. This is the longest. Donovan Williams, the junior from Belton, all the way to the house. I tell you, he's elusive. He's got great speed. Shifty, gets off of tackles, gets off of breaks through the hole quickly. It's a good looking running back. That, that kind of gives you an idea. He's listed as, as the number three running back on, right. the, on the depth chart. 
They've got a lot of talent at that position. Feeling good on that sideline. Somebody's probably turning to Keyshawn Hill and said, hey, we don't even need you. <laughs> because right now it's guys like Williams and Overstreet showing off some speed. Let's watch this run again, Jeff. That was a tremendous move in space right there against Thompson to create a big seam. Yeah, then the, he breaks to the outside here, but he'll elude the final tackle right here. Just throws him to the ground. Nicely done. And somehow keeps his feet in bounds on top of that. And that was a that was a big time rush right there. You know, HBU would like a better defensive effort in this first quarter. Still almost four minutes remaining. You get the feeling, though, Jeff, with this Bearcats offense, they could do this to a lot of teams right now because they're playing their best football at the end of the season while the Huskies are still dealing with, you know, some manpower issues, just trying to field some healthy bodies to go up against a team that right now looks like they're heading towards at least to share the conference championship. And of course, maybe then the FCS playoffs again. Sure, and I remember last year talking with Vic Sheely when we were in Huntsville, and he said that it'll be interesting to see where we are when we play them this time next year because they opened the season with Sam Houston State right. last season. This year, almost would have been better to open against them with them having a new head coach, but instead they get them when they're peaking, and that's just how it works out sometimes is with the scheduling. D'Angelo Wallace from about the seven. And again, Unable to get back beyond the 20, so good special teams coverage by the Bearcats. And okay, field position for HBU. They were able to move the ball out to about midfield in their previous drive before a punt. And now B.J. Kelly will come back on as the featured running back as the Huskies offense will go to work. Let's see who's going to line up at quarterback right now. It looks like it will be Kadarius Baker. And Adam Beck could come in off the bench. Freshman out of Frisco. Baker started the game 25 of 61 through the air this year. Now he's missed some time. There There's B.J. Kelly. BJ. Boy, I love watching B.J. Kelly run. He gets those legs churning forward, and he yeah. gains 15 on first down. I just love the way he accelerates through any hole forward. Yeah, he really does. He's one of their best running backs, no question about it. B.J. Kelly, Larry Day, they all run hard. Craig Bell. I mean, just look at that burst of speed. He gets to the hole quickly and just finds a way to pick up the big first down yardage. First first down of the game for HBU. Lazard had that ball deflect off him, and then it went up for grabs. A little bit dangerous for the time being. Michael Wade hit him. This is that time of the game where if you're HBU, you're going to go to your bread and butter right now. You're going to try to find, okay, what's been working for us so far this year? How can we find a way to kind of put together a drive and kind of slow down this uh, this runaway train right now with Sam Houston State? Good point. So second and 10. Still a lot of time left here in our first quarter. B.J. Kelly. Had that play sniffed out almost immediately. DeMonte Wheeler, a senior from Grand Prairie, a backup defensive tackle, was in the backfield almost as soon as Kelly took the football from Baker. Yeah, not much doing on that particular play right there. The problem is, is that the down linemen for Sam Houston State, they're getting some great surge and got to find a way to slow that down. And Jeff, looking out there, it's as if the Bearcats are substituting rather freely Many of their second team linemen are in, including Darren Harris. Michael Wade right now, the safety though. Right at the line of scrimmage with Bibbins. The play clock may have expired, we'll see. Yeah, this is going against HBU. A little movement there on the offense. Ball start, Ball start. Offense. offense, number 54. Number Five, Five yard penalty, penalty. Third, down. third down. That's Hunter Barron, the left tackle. Ross Smith, a referee today, has those gloves on in a cold afternoon here in Houston. You know, I was kind of thinking about uh, some of these HBU seniors and, or, or well, Sam Houston State seniors too. Uh, anytime you, you're, you're the you're the program, and they're they're looking to you for your leadership out there. And here it is, senior day here for HBU. Not too many seniors, but they need their seniors right now to get everybody kind of under control and uh, find a way to get back to their game plan. Calm down just a bit. Baker has a lot of running room. He's going to have to get to about the 46 and will not get there. That hole closed quickly as Wade came flying in from his safety spot. Had some coverage as well from Tristan Eshe, the second leading tackler on this team. You'll see 22 and 2.
combined near the quarterback here at the end of the play. Watch, looks like there's all kinds of room, Jeff, and all of a sudden, here come a couple of Bearcats. Yeah, that was the right play there, though. Everybody was covered downfield, so he was able to pick up some of the yardage they had lost on the penalty. But a punt here on fourth and eight. Guzman will knuckle this one towards the boundary, and the ball will head out of bounds, and now we'll see where it's spotted. As the referee continues to jog up. Ball goes out of bounds. We'll stop at the 25 with a buck 35 to play here in our first quarter. And, you know, just kind of talking about Keyshawn Hill there, the senior, and, uh, and some of these other seniors, Michael Wade, uh, we heard from them earlier. Those guys, you had to be thinking when you walked into your, your, your first day at, at spring practice and, and you see you've got a new head coach and you're thinking, I'm a senior right now. I've got some big expectations. We've done really well here. Uh, their head coach, Coach Fritz, went over to Georgia Southern. But no question about it, they have, they've kind of righted the ship. They got up to a little bit of a slow start, but they've really turned things around here. And those seniors were a big reason why. They bought in to what, what Coach Keeler was to preaching. Here's Ridgeway Frank. He's a senior out of spring, not a big guy, 5'9", but a chance to carry the football, and he races forward for what will be a gain of about eight on the play. I want to come back to that point, though, Jeff, uh, time permitting. This Bearcats offense, they love to go up tempo, so it's Frank again, and he will carry for a first down. And that's a question I had for Coach Keeler this week. I said, what would it mean? to win a conference championship or a share considering you were one and three and considering you had all these young kids and I think you see the efforts of their coaching this year and these kids working hard to put this team right back to where they've been in recent years. Johnson, this one might be picked. Taylor Thompson was the closest man there and he couldn't backpedal and get the pass that was probably intended for Yedidiah Lewis. Yeah, Taylor knows he should have had that one. That ball was just led up for in the air just for him. I'm, I'm sure he was looking around wondering if anybody else <laughs> was behind him. <laughs> Taylor Thompson's made some big plays this year, but all kind of time right there. That's where it all starts. Jared Johnson with all kind of time to throw that ball. That one kind of sailed on him. There is a bit of a breeze out there. The flags are definitely blowing about maybe a good 10 to 15 miles per hour. Second and 10. That play going nowhere. Just a quick little pass here at the boundary. It was Grant Finney. He's just a young freshman from Allen, Texas. Got to throw those tight spirals. You always hear Tom Brady talk about that because he has to throw up in that New England weather and tight spirals. Throw the ball harder if you have to. Get it through that wind. Third and five, there's Ridgeway Frank. HBU trying to get off the field, and Ridgeway Frank competing for yards will propel himself up near midfield and move the sticks. Here's a man who carried the football just 13 times all season, but he's being featured on this drive. Yeah, he's getting a chance to kind of show what he can do. I mean, up 35 nothing here in the first quarter. I think we're going to see a lot of different faces here for Sam Houston State today. Didn't expect it, though, by the end of the first quarter. A little play action. Yedidiah Lewis blazing speed out of the backfield. He will race forward just beyond the sticks again. Second tackled shy of the 40. For and Lewis approaching 50 HBU catches on the season. And that'll bring us to the end quarter. of our first quarter. Bearcats scored in their first five offensive drives. They lead HBU after one, 35 to nothing. One quarter complete on senior day at Husky Stadium. Sam Houston State, the visitors from Huntsville lead 35 to nothing. Yeah, Houston Baptist excited about it being senior day. First time on campus with senior day. Here's Vic Sheely talking about it before the game. Here we are on the last day of uh, these kids' uh, college career. And my, my hope and prayer is just that this has been a great, great moment in their life and that they've grown and both the brotherhood of a football team. So a lot of excitement right there and just, uh, you know, the thoughts there from Sheely about senior day. And you see that that was before the game. The players were honored and good to see that. Just uh, all these guys. And I mean, you, you look across that field there and, you know, Bibbins, he's one of those players that's kind of been through a lot here with the uh, with the team and one of the leaders on the field, if you will. I want to talk about Bibbins as this game gets a little further in, Jeff. He is a guy that has all the physical tools. The Bearcats back here to start the second quarter. Jalen Overstreet, he has one long touchdown run, not this time. Derek Broussard, the freshman from 
Beaumont wrapped him up. Otherwise, he had a lot of clear sailing again. Hey, he runs hard, doesn't he? <laughs> Jalen Overstreet. I mean, I remember him playing at the University of Texas, and uh, I knew that was going to be a big loss for him when he left. But I tell you, Sam Houston State's getting a good player in him. I would say he was he runs pretty. And that doesn't uh, maybe work as far as a football term, but there's a glide to <laughs> him does. once he gets that first step, kind of that hesitation. Yeah, these first quarter statistics are, are pretty lopsided, obviously. 35 to nothing. Sam Houston State on top, but the rushing yards, 212 to 54. These are just big plays. I mean, these, these all happen on three right. or four plays. <laughs> so not really many drives to talk about. Second and eight for the Bearcats. Donovan Williams trying to pick a hold off the right side of the line. He'll get a couple of yards before he's hit and dropped. Eric Emowako, the Oregon transfer, was one of those there defensively for Old HBU. Will be third and five, so the Huskies have a chance to keep the Bearcats out of the end zone if they can make a play here, shoving everybody up into that box, and you see Johnson then stop and turn to the sideline. Recalibrate a bit. The drives here for Sam Houston State, two plays, 43 yards, six plays, 83 yards, five plays, 25 yards, one play, 48, one play, 80. There's your five touchdowns. Third and five, the pocket holds long enough for that pass to get off, and it's incomplete. Pass was a little bit behind the intended target there on coverage was Prince pass Sam. And a good job by Prince Sam getting his paw on the play right there. Kind of had to move it back behind, but uh, nice job there knocking it away. Intended for Grant Finney, but it's incomplete. Now here's Luke Swimberga. He is one of four kickers at the FCS level who is perfect this year. 11 for 11. This one will come from right around 36 yards. Can he stay perfect? Boy, that one's coming into your living room, and he stays perfect. Boy, you love a kicker who you can run out there and be Mr. Reliable. Swimberga is 38-nothing. Sam Houston State. When you get into mid-November and you haven't missed a field goal, that's amazing, 12 for 12. It's a great asset, especially heading closer and closer towards postseason. And I think there's some thoughts that uh, Sam Houston State feels like they need to win this conference. They need to kind of lock down that uh, that seed heading into postseason play. Of course, the goal to try to get to Frisco. Still a possibility in this Southland Conference, maybe of a five-way tie at five and two, which would really scramble the standings. But a big game next week for Sam Houston State. They will be at home against Central Arkansas. Of course, this is the season finale for HBU. And, and it just kind of happens where you have the two teams, Sam Houston State and Southeastern Louisiana, where they really can't settle it on the field. And there's a good chance they'll both be 7-1 and one when conference play is over. So they're going to have to look to the teams that uh, they, they've beaten uh, and, you know, and sort it all out. <laughs> we'll have to check in later on Southeastern. They're hosting McNeese. That's a huge game. Huge game. In fact, they started the same time we did here in Houston. D'Angelo Wallace has been a busy man trying to return some kicks. This time he'll get across the 20, but return not a lot Houston more available. Stephen Williams the there on the That's special the teams tackle for Sam Houston State. Yeah, the thing that you, you kind of look at when you, when you look at the schedule, for example, with uh, Sam Houston State, it was, I mean, to be five and one in conference play after the way they started, I don't think a lot of people saw that. And uh, they've, they've been, they've just been able to run the football. They've been able to pass it. Uh, their quarterback play, Jared Johnson, has been nearly perfect. I mean, he's really balanced the way he moves his team. Their defense has been strong as well. And this league has impressed me really this entire year. There's a head of steam. Speaking of impressive, B.J. Kelly rumbles out to the 40 yard line, gains 18 on first down. He's had a couple of huge runs on first down carries for the young man from Waco. He's kind of the spark plug for HBU. If you haven't had a chance to see the Huskies play, B.J. Kelly usually gets it started. Already a couple of big explosive runs. Here he is again. No rest for the weary. He'll carry again and nothing fancy this time. And he picks up five as he rushes to the 45. But Vic Sheely said that this week, Jeff. He said this is a tough league to win football games. 
very happy they were able to get that conference win against Nichols State. Sure. But it's tough week in and week out, especially when you're starting to play the teams of the caliber that HBU has in this last, let's say, month. Oh, absolutely. This conference usually gets a couple teams into the postseason. They go far. Nice hole for B.J. Kelly. Should have the first down and more. Impressive running by B.J. Kelly on this drive. He's had the last three carries. He was finally dropped by a handful of those Bearcats, including A.J. Davis, one of the backup linebackers, but a fresh set of downs for HBU. I want to kind of explain real quick the uh, this whole playoff uh, situation or tiebreaker here in just a moment after this play. B.J. Kelly, why not try him again? Ran into the line, and that'll be the shortest gain on this drive, but a couple of positive yards. So just to make this more clear, basically, uh, Sam Houston State, they lost earlier this year to Northwestern State, and Southeastern Louisiana lost to SFA. So if you look at it that way, Sam Houston State is a fan of SFA because they want them to finish higher than Northwestern State because that ultimately is going to probably be the tiebreaker. The highest team that you lost to, did they finish higher than the other team that's tied with you uh, as far as the standings are concerned? I think I almost understand what you're saying. <laughs> no, I didn't do a good job of that. <laughs> well, no, I, I'm with you as Kevin Butts. Uh, we got two weeks to sort it we all do. out. We do. Kevin Butts slowly walks towards the sideline. But in the SEC, you could still have in the Western Conference, you could have a four-way tie atop the division, of which they go through a series of tiebreakers that could result in a coin toss. So there's a lot of football that uh, will be played in these next couple of weeks that could avoid such things as multiple tiebreakers, coin tosses, and all that comes with chaos. All right, and what would that mean for the Final Four, too? Nice little spin move by Kadarius Baker to get out of a tackle, but not Darius the second Baker and the third attempt. Luis Carino came flying in a Capel, Texas native. Line. Baker was Bring looking the for the home run down. ball, but he ended up losing a couple of yards. See what happened right there. Baker faking the handoff there, rolling out. Yeah, everyone's covered deep downfield. He had an option down short, but decided to go ahead and tuck it away. Kind of gives you an idea of that angle, what the quarterback sees. He's looking downfield. If his man's not turned around, he's probably not going to throw it. Then your next check is uh, who's the, the running back coming out of the backfield. Pocket beginning to crumble. Third and 11th. And this one just thrown into the sideline is fourth down for HBU. So they reach Sam Houston State territory, but then go in reverse. But that was their most impressive drive so far of the game. Uh, you, you alluded to it earlier, B.J. Kelly is kind of the key right there. I mean, he makes some big plays. He'll give your team some confidence. He uh, will produce yards for you when there's not even a hole there. He'll find a way to, to get four or five, maybe in some cases 10 yards, like on that first one we had the first down. You could see where he'd be one of those running backs that Vic Sheely could build around going forward. Just need a little more consistent quarterback play, and I'm not telling them anything they don't already know. As this kick by Guzman gets a tremendous roll inside the five to about the four. Well done by the special teams of HBU. 10-20 remains here in the half from Husky Stadium. I'm sure Christian Guzman will take that. He, I know when he kicked it, that ball was close to being blocked, but he got it off, and it wasn't a perfect spiral, but when it hit the ground, it hit just right and rolled all the way down to the four-yard line. Sometimes, you know, you catch a break. Just had that shot of some of the fans in the stands here at Husky Stadium, and I think we started the game with a graphic saying it was 52 outside. I'm going to dispute that right now. <laughs> it does not feel like it's 52 degrees outside. It's a it's a cold, maybe upper 40s right now. It feels closer to 32 than it does 52 <laughs> with the wind and the yeah. breeze outside. And the dampness, a little <laughs> bit of moisture in the air. That drizzle will always feel a little cooler. One thing, though, that's been red hot, it's the Sam Houston State offense. They had to settle for three points on their last drive. You know, Sam Houston State uh, earlier talking about uh, just playing competitively and, and getting fired up. Um, I want you to hear some thoughts about th uh, just their this team and what they've gone through this year and, and the fact that uh, what they've accomplished already. We will recruit Houston play as hard as any spot that we'll recruit in, in, uh, in the country. Um, so, yeah, having that kind of game and, and having 
um, you know, that rivalry and, and being right in your backyard, I think, is really critical for us. Yeah, I'm from Houston, so coming back, going to HBU is like coming home. So it's not going to be any difference besides just playing football. And just like a lot of guys around Sam Houston, you know, Houston is just their second home. Fertile recruiting grounds here in Houston. There's Don King the third, already the backup quarterback in for Jared Johnson, and carries out of the shadows of his own end zone out to about the 22. Yeah, that was uh, Keyshawn Hill. He's at a Klein High School, of course, Greater Houston area, and a lot of players from the Sam Houston State team from Houston. Donovan Williams races forward for another 12 yards, and you know, Jeff, even when SFA came to town, we talked about it in our telecast. It's kind of a double-edged sword. For HBU, they know this is a tremendous area just to circle the borders and recruit so many Houston kids. Other teams in the Southland Conference are coming here with the same ideas. And Don King III will try and rush, and he will be dropped, unable to get out of the tackle of Kafutua. The freshman made a tackle right at the line of scrimmage. A team like Sam Houston State, they can come in here for the Battle of the Piney Woods. They can bring 200 recruits to NRG Stadium. They can come down to Houston, play HBU, go out and see some of the high school kids on Friday night, invite some here on Saturday. And they take advantage of these trips to H-Town. Well, they beat SFA 42-28 in the 89th Battle of the Piney Woods at NRG Stadium, and they've won five straight games here in the Bayou City. So, yeah, Houston has been good for Sam Houston State, and they've played everywhere here. Rice Field, Rice Stadium, Houston Public School Stadium, the Astrodome, Robertson Stadium, BBVA Compass Stadium. That was where they played HBU last, last uh, or they had a game there last year. That's but right. uh, NRG also, Stadium. Third, seven again. Maybe we've seen the end of Jared Johnson. A lot of playing time for this young man, King, trying to set up the screen. Donovan Williams. Dolan whiffed on the tackle, and Donovan Williams will scramble forward shy of midfield, but he'll have the first down. Reception by Williams. Carries good for the first down. He's a runner, isn't he? They've got some talented running backs, no question about it. Look at this play one more time. Nice little dump off here from Don King the third out of Waxahachie. And I tell you, these running backs, that's Donovan Williams. He just is so elusive. Gets out of that first tackle almost every time. There's Overstreet. Overstreet down to about the 45 of HBU. Yeah, Jalen Overstreet out of Tatum. A lot of Texas kids, of course, playing in the Southland Conference, but Sam Houston State recruits with the best of them here in the SLC. We talked about all their transfers. Here's a second down and three pass bounced in front of Gerald Thomas. There's a lot of kids, and you look across the roster and, and people that played at Cal or they played at TCU. You go through some of the Big 12 schools as the wind continues to blow here at Husky Stadium. And if you have a chance to play immediately and transfer maybe to the FCS level, but play for a team that's got a great shot to be in the postseason, the playoffs, you would see where that could be an attractive option for a lot of young men. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Sam Houston State's gone deep into the postseason. They're one of the teams that I mean, they've played in championship games, and they haven't been able to get over that hump. But just getting there is so impressive. I mean, it's it's a battle at the tournament. A lot of running room for Don King. In fact, he bounces outside, dives inside the 25-yard line, and a fresh set of downs for the Bearcats after that tackle from Taylor Thompson. I mean, Sam Houston State's one, if they could somehow hold on and maybe be co-champions this year, that would be three out of the last four years. You know, they've earned Southland Conference titles in 91, 2001, 2004, 2011, and 2012. Trying to make the playoffs for the fourth straight season. Overstreet tried to change his uh, gears and go to the left, but Cody Moncure, freshman from Richmond, dropped him for no gain. Back on the play by Kayla Mallow. Well, if they should find a way to get into the, the postseason this year, it would be their fourth straight year in the FCS playoffs. And I think only two teams have done that. If you're not real familiar with the FCS playoffs, it's a fun tournament. You know, if you're used to the bowl sequences here in FBS, there's Donovan Williams again. Donovan Williams ahead of steam. He'll walk into the end zone, his third William touchdown here this afternoon. 
He makes it look easy, doesn't he? He's a great running back right there, Donovan Williams. He probably had a really good week at practice and uh, just said, hey, coach, come on, give me a shot. Let's, let me show you what I can do. I mean, he comes in, he's listed number three in our depth chart, and he's just having a monster first half. Don't underestimate what playing time means to these young men. Get that opportunity to get in there and show your stuff. Almost feel like I can block that kick. <laughs> Coming in too hot. That's it's go good pro. from Swimberga. 45-0 Sam Houston State. 6.50 to play before the half. Back at Husky Stadium. Bearcats, a freight train that can't be stopped right now, Jeff. Look at that scoring drive. They started from their four. Even the poor field position didn't stop them. Yeah, they have scored in all kind of ways. Quick plays, long drives, you name it. Swimberiga sends one in the direction. Boy, that's B.J. Kelly. How about B.J. Kelly returning some kicks? Boy, he got drilled at about the 15-yard line. Yeah, a player like B.J. Kelly with that kind of return speed, I can see how he'd be a good return man. It's just risky to put a guy like him back there because that's you, you see return men do get injured. I mean, it's just those fast impact plays. Got guys running full speed, you know, both ways. <laughs> it's just a collision. You know, the NFL is trying to find a way to kind of control injuries. They're trying to make it, you know, easier to kick the ball uh, through the end zone and put the teams on the 20-yard line, or 25-yard line in college. So, you know. It's dangerous, no doubt. Huskies will scrimmage from their 15. Kadarius Baker may be changing the play. Huskies got into Sam Houston State territory in that last drive. They went backwards. Speaking of going backwards, the Bearcat defense the sniffed out that play on the ca carry yards. from Larry Day. And from the there were three Bearcat defenders in that backfield almost immediately. By the way, we're talking about two teams as far as consecutive, four consecutive years in the FCS playoffs. McNeese was the other one, 91 through 95. So, but the Southland Conference, I mean, you understand you're gonna lose some games non-conference. You get in a conference play and it's not uncommon for teams to get in to the postseason with a couple of losses. That's right. And then make a huge run in the playoffs. McNeese may be the highest ranked team a couple of weeks ago, but they're trailing this afternoon at Southeastern Louisiana. Kadarius Baker looking for the home run ball. Wesley Lewis can't run underneath it. Good coverage from That's Trey Near Orr. But McNeese trailing at Southeastern 14 to six in the second quarter. Kadarius Baker really let that one fly right there. That was a pretty well thrown ball. Notice this at the very end, Kadarius Baker puts it up. It looks like it's gonna sail. It looks like it's gonna go long, but it almost becomes a catchable ball because that wind kind of knocked it down. Well, the QBs love to show off that arm strength yeah. though every once in a while, right? Sure, why not? Put it up. And he's, he's letting them know right now, hey, run that route all the way through. <laughs> I know what I'm doing back here. Third and 14, so from nearest five yard line, this pass not even close to Ayanacho. In his sails into the uh, HBU sideline, and the uh, Huskies will have to punt it. See a little frustration there from Maya Nacho. Not very good field position for the Huskies in a three and out, and they'll have to punt back to Sam Houston State. Yeah, the Bearcats kind of having their way today, and, and why not? I mean, an opportunity. We talked about the, the fertile recruiting grounds, a chance to kind of show other kids here in this area a little bit more about what Sam Houston State's all about. Gerald Thomas might have a chance to return this one. He's at midfield. See if he runs up and plays the carom. Another good bounce off the foot of Guzman. He's had a big day today. He will get a roll all the way to about the 32. So a huge punt from Guzman. That'll add to his average. The Bearcats, though, will get the football back. Still plenty of time to go here in our second quarter. Christian Guzman out of Brookshire, Texas. Good punter. He's, he likes the rugby style of punt. We've seen different styles from him. I know you've alluded, alluded to the fact that sometimes he takes a little too long to get it off, but I think they've been working on that. It seems like his delivery is a little quicker now, and 
I've noticed here in the last part of the season that uh, he's punting a little bit better. I would agree, and, and I think you've seen the results both in getting the footballs punted and then, of course, also the distance. Okay, we're going to step aside, 534 to play in the half. It's been all Sam Houston State so far here on Senior Day at HBU. Bearcats offense been extremely efficient, productive, and flashy today. They're getting the sports car out of the garage and taking it for a spin here this afternoon, although you get the feeling now they might be a little more conservative. Jalen Overstreet, though, even on a routine play, will fight forward and gains about nine on first down. And I was going to say, Jalen Overstreet and Donovan Williams are driving the sports car. They're in the front seat. <laughs> King will keep, and he is going to be thrown backwards. Nice open field tackle by Terrell Brown, the third. Came into today second in this team in tackles to his linebacking companion, Garrett Dolan. He sniffed this play out almost immediately. Yeah, nowhere to run right there for Don King. I bet he's the promoter in that car. What do you think, right. Don King, the third? You might be thinking, yeah, is he related to that? No, not that he's Don not. King. <laughs> the other Don King, the former quarterback in the Southwest Conference, is over straight, will carry and tackled and dropped by Brown right at the midfield stripe. You know, so often you hear about football players, and they'll say, yeah, I know, I knew his dad, or you know, there's the, those those bloodlines and. Uh, I tell you, when, you, when you've been around football all your life, when your father played, it's such an advantage. I mean, it's like having a coach in the house at all times. Last game we broadcast here, the quarterback was the coach's son and Zach Conn for SFA. Well thrown ball and a completed pass into the hands of Grant Finney. And Finney still fighting forward inside the 10 before he was shoved out of bounds. And you see the coverage. Taylor Thompson was downfield along with Prince Sam. But Grant Finney making a few plays here today. And again, he's just a freshman out of Allen. Yeah, five foot, 162 pounds. When he lacks in size, he makes up for speed. He's got some great speed. And the Bearcats near what could be another touchdown. Donovan Williams to about the one. Well, Jeff, there's just no give with the different units and the players and the skill position athletes they can run on the field. Yeah, they're loaded. They have so much depth, and that's one of the things, you know, Vic Sheely will tell you that, that that's one of the things they're up against, being a relatively new program. I mean, first full year in the Southland Conference, they don't have the depth that these other teams have. They don't have that leadership. That's a good play right there, though. How about that play? Josh Jones, the junior out of Tulsa, throws down Don King the third. And he's a transfer out of the state of Oklahoma and making a big time play right there. Every time you can get those the, the JC transfers, that doesn't hurt. You know, they bring that kind of that leadership as well. Beg your pardon, that's Corey Hayes, 48 instead of 46 Jones with that jersey tucked into his uh, stomach. But Corey yeah. Hayes, give yeah. him credit for the tackle. Got a Brandeis in San Antonio. So now King gets to throw and his pass was low. Really didn't have a Good angle on that one. It was intended for Motlaw. And it's fourth down, so Swimberga may come on to try and make it 13 of 13. Now, if you're a superstitious kicker and you haven't missed one all year and you're one of only four guys in FCS football not to miss, and you're going for 13 out of 13, <laughs> maybe he doesn't even know. Don't even want to tell him, right, if you're a Bearcat fan? You trying to give him the announcer jinx right now? <laughs> Maybe he can't be jinxed. This one a little bit shorter kick. Oh, my goodness. He oh, did he get it did through. Get it, through. <laughs> it looked like it was heading wide, didn't it, for yeah. a split second? Yeah, that slider was moving to the left quick. <laughs> Pretty good breaking pitch, but he gets the strike call. 48 nothing. Bearcats as he sent one that looked at least coming off the foot like it might miss. 
250 remains here in our second quarter. You know, Coach Casey Keeler, he actually he kept a couple of the staff members, and he's got some great Texas ties on his assistant coaching staff, and I think that's important too because you want to be able to have that that recruiting base, and you know that these assistants have, have been here. They know where to go, and they've got established, uh, you know, relationships, and they, they need to – that's important to keep those. He's born in Pennsylvania. Says he's, a, he's really enjoyed living in the state of Texas, and the weather has been a little different than, uh, than Pennsylvania and, of course, Delaware, too. That's right. <laughs> I think there's a certain attraction about coaching in this state, whether it's at the high school level or the college level for those that maybe grow up in regions outside of the South. B.J. Kelly will track that one, but he will not have a play. And the touchback will give HBU probably their best field position this afternoon. You know, Joe Flacco actually played at Delaware for uh, Coach right. Keeler. And that, that's, you know, I mean, they've had five NFL draft picks at, from Delaware. So, I mean. Rich Gannon's another, right? Yeah, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, the Southland Conference is one of those conferences also that just a lot of, they get a lot of looks from the NFL because they're just some quality talent in the Southland Conference. Glad you brought up Joe Flacco because uh, there's a name, there's a guy that played under Coach Keeler at Delaware. And the other Michigan people like to refer to him as <laughs> they have that look like the Michigan Wolverines. They probably could beat Michigan this year. Similar helmet. <laughs> they might be right. I said it before. I just love watching some of these running backs for Very HBU. Easy. That's not Kelly. That's Craig Bell. But he has a similar burst the way he comes around the line or through the hole. And Craig Bell with a carry. He will gain six about yards. six on the play and first down. And I don't think there's any question that it's been a strength for HBU all year long, and they will continue to build around that. And they'll continue to work on getting in, uh, more quarterbacks in here to make the competition level even tougher at, at practice, and that's what you're looking for, competition. It's been a strange year for Jonathan Fleming as Bell will carry again. He's shy of the first down. We talked a little bit about Fleming. Here was a guy that was shot in the offseason, the wrong place at the wrong time, and one went through his shoulder, and raised his heel yet he, he had a couple of real nice glimpses this year Jeff and you've seen him play a lot this year but he broke a thumb a couple of weeks ago against Lamar yeah and that's and that's a that's a tough injury to overcome if you're a quarterback but the fact that he you know played in the first game after getting shot only less than two months prior to that it was amazing his recovery third and two and this is maybe going to be short Bell tried to carry right up between the big guys up front, but he is short by a yard. And if you're HBU, you're inside two minutes to go here in the second half. Thought is, hey, why not go for it? At least the fans downstairs, you see them encouraging the Huskies to stay on the field and try and pick up that first down. And right now, as I look across the defensive line for Sam Houston State, I see a lot of guys that are second and third teamers, so they have substituted rather freely. Yeah, it's fourth and one here, and it looks like that's what I thought was going to happen. They're going to go ahead and call a timeout. Just run enough clock off. Not that too many of us are looking at the clock right now, but. <laughs> timeout called. 1-10 to play here in our second quarter. But, you know, let's. You look back on the season here for for HBU. This is their final game of the season. You know, early on in the year, there were some winnable games. Uh, the McMurray game should have won, lost 26-17. Northern Colorado on the road had a touchdown pass from Fleming that was called back. Uh, literally, it was like one of the last plays of the game. I mean, you get that touchdown, go for two, you can tie that up. That's they right. lose 28-20. Uh, then they go and beat Texas College 72-6. Um, did not look too good against Abilene Christian falling 59-14, nor did they look good against Incarnate Word losing that one 31-8 and then Central Arkansas. But they played really well against Stephen F. Austin at home. It was tight for three quarters. They could certainly build off that. And then they beat Nichols on October 25th, 31-21. So you, you, know, you build off those, those good games and you find out what worked in those game plans and you build off that. Get more recruits in here. You know, they're only going to get better. They're going to get better players. 
over the next couple of years, that's for sure. You've got to believe these young men playing as freshmen will benefit from this experience. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, isn't that the expression? That one down at the 30 yard line. But Jeff, this has been a physical test because last year in that developmental season, the Huskies would play a game, they'd have a couple of weeks off. It was almost as if they had a bye week before every game. Sure, had a couple of weeks to game plan. But yeah, you're, you're, right. you're getting the point now in this season where you start to realize just how tough it is to play every single week. And Kicks struggling with fatigue and injuries. And that's the words of Vic Shealy this week. He said, it's not an excuse, but you pay a price if you can't hang with some of these Southland Conference teams from a depth standpoint. I think we're seeing that maybe at times here in this first half. Yeah, no question about it. And, and the players that HBU has lost this year have been key players. Yes. I mean, they've had three quarterbacks get hurt. That's just hard to overcome. And if you're a Texans fan, you know if you don't have very good quarterback play, it's going to make it awfully tough to be competitive and win games. Well, how about Steven Williams just spinning and pirouetting and gaining about 13 yards on that pitch and catch on first down? But HBU will, will build off this. They've they've had a, a the girls' soccer team had a lot of success this year, and, and you know you just you, they've had they've always had success on the basketball court, and we're getting into that time of year. But use that to your advantage. Uh oh, Donovan Williams, he's loose. Will he be caught? Donovan Williams finds the end zone one more time. How about that speed of Donovan Williams? I did not see this coming from him. <laughs> We're getting his little coming out party today. And everybody's invited. I think that's his third touchdown. He had a, he was capped off that 10 play 96 yard drive. Then he had the touchdown, uh, an 80 yard run to make it 35 nothing. And you might remember, um, so this is down number three, three TDs for him. Swim Barriga from the hold of Don King the third. High snap, but a good placement. And the extra point sails through. You see the breeze on the pants of our referees, but yeah, kick ended up good. between the pipes. 55 0 Sam Houston State as they keep things rolling here in the second half of their season. Yeah, they can beat you in so many different ways. Of course, Sam Houston State's going to play Central Arkansas next week. and. Central Arkansas has got a great looking team, but they fell earlier this year. I was at a game when they lost to Abilene Christian up in Plano and uh, ACU being one of the newer teams to get into the Southland Conference, proving that, hey, you know what? It can be done. But of course, what's the difference? ACU has been playing football for a long right. time, you know, and That's HBU right. is just getting started. So, you know, you have to kind of build on that experience. And if you're HBU right now, you, you know, you look to that leadership, you, you look around you know, Vic's going to, he'll hit the recruiting trail here probably right after today. <laughs> no one ever said a startup program was easy. I, I really think the template and the formula they have designed here at HBU will be followed by other schools and programs that decide to add football going forward. But you know it's a process. It's its not something where you snap your fingers and, and uh, magically you're competitive. But I think they're on the right track. Just been a rough first half here against this talented Bearcats team, 55 nothing, and where the last thing they want is a fumble here, but they've had a hard time just getting the football back to about the 20 on those kickoffs, and just a few seconds remain here in our first half. Well, it, you know, it starts also with being on campus. Last year, HBU did not play on campus. This year, they're on campus. The, this is only phase one of a three-phase setup here at the stadium where they're going to bring in uh, new seating on the other side of the field, and then they'll close it in on the end zones as well. They'll have a brick facade. It's going to be nice. I mean, that will wow recruits. You know, it, it's the whole it's the whole package. Weight rooms. You know, you have to be building something at all times with athletic programs around the country. I think that's Terrence Peters, who's into the game. Maybe our final play here in the first half. And it is Peters, Houston kid with the carry, and now we're inside 10 seconds, and that should do it here in the first half on senior day at Husky Stadium. For the Bearcats, it's been like a snowball going down the hill. Maybe a good analogy today on this cold afternoon, but they just continue to build and add to the points and to the yards. So the Huskies have their work cut out for them to make some adjustments. Meanwhile, it's 55 nothing Bearcats at the break.
And welcome back to Houston, Texas. We're here at Husky Stadium where Sam Houston State leading at halftime 55 to nothing over HBU. And joining me now here on the kind of a frigid day, uh, Steve Maniachi, the athletic director here at HBU. And first of all, Steve, um, thoughts as we play the regular season finale here for HBU. Uh, it's been a historic year for the Huskies and just kind of getting things started this year. What's this whole process been it like? It has been. Well, you know, it's, it's really been an amazing process from my standpoint. When you think that just two years ago, we didn't have a football on the campus. Right. You know, we didn't have this field, we didn't have this facility, and so many people have stepped up to make this possible that, that I mean, I, I, can't, I can't tell you how grateful I am to all the folks who have helped get us to where we are today. Winning the game against Nichols here at home, how special was that? Well, that was huge. That was huge from a lot of aspects. Of course, it was homecoming. Sure. That's the first thing. And, <laughs> and then that evening also, we had the Dunhams here and honored the Dunhams. And of course, the Dunhams made a gift that made this field possible, and their name is on the field. And so that was an evening that we got to celebrate with them and dedicate the field to them. And then to go win the game was just really special in this first year in our program. And that's not the only success here. Obviously, uh, the soccer team won a Southland Conference tournament right here this year, the girls' well, soccer that's team. Right. That's right. Our soccer team had, and, and I hadn't really looked at the record, but they actually went undefeated. Well, they had one defeat through the whole conference season this year. Got to the tournament as the second seed and ended up winning the tournament this past weekend over at Lamar and then got to represent the conference in, in the NCAA tournament last night at NM. And now basketball season kind of getting underway. Your thoughts about how this has kind of been one of the pride and joys here for the Huskies basketball. Well, for a long time, this has been a basketball school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've hung our hat on basketball for a long time. And now coming from the NAIA and making the jump to the NCAA has been a bit of a stretch for us. But we're starting to make up that ground now. And I think you'll see in the men's program this year a marked improvement over where we were last year. Uh, people forget when we came back to the NCAA, we joined the Great West, and we actually ended up playing in two championship games in the Great West. Now the Great West has now become the WAC. Sure. So had we stayed in that league, there's every reason to believe we would have been pretty competitive in that league. People just don't understand how competitive this league is. And, and speaking of, uh, people just don't understand how difficult it is to actually get a football program going. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to just ask you a quick question about, you know, the job that Vic Sheely's done here. I mean, the ability to bring in recruits and, and junior college transfers this year, play the first full season, it's a daunting task. But, oh, it is. But, it certainly is. Yeah, go ahead, kind of elaborate just what that's been well, like, the experience as we go into year two next year. Yeah, interestingly enough, now we did play last year. But people forget that we hired Vic in April of the year before, so he didn't have a chance to recruit that whole first year, and we just played last year with basically walk-ons. And so this really is our first recruiting class, and we're playing with mostly freshmen. Now, we did honor, I believe, eight seniors, seniors to start the game this evening, um, but the rest of the squad really is very, very young. And so there's a world of difference yeah. between lining up as an 18-year-old freshman on a football field in this conference and lining up as a 22- or 23-year-old senior in this conference. And keep in mind, Sam Houston State's been the, the championship game of the MCS Absolutely. level the last couple Absolutely. of years. <laughs> they are really literally the cream of the crop of, of this division. So, you know, last year when we lined up against them to start the season, at least now we didn't do very well, but at least we were fresh. You know, now we're coming off 11 straight games, and we're pretty beat up at this point. Sure. But but what a fantastic job Vic's done of getting this program off the ground and, and taking it to where we want to go. I've had nothing but great things down the line for this team. Steve Maniacci, Athletic Director here at HBU. Let's go ahead and send it over to Brett Dolan with First Half Stats and more. Brett? Okay, thanks, Jeff, and thanks, Steve. 55 nothing thanks, here at the half. You see the first downs, 21 for Sam Houston State. And, of course, rushing yards. This is a team that is made their calling over the course of the season, what they do on the ground, 227 yards a game. Well, ran for 391 in the first half. Total yards, almost uh, 600. Clean game as far as penalties for the most part. In time of possession, relatively even, but Sam Houston State with some quick scoring drives. And part of that has to be the play of Donovan Williams. Keep in mind for the Bearcats, their tremendous running back, Keyshawn Hill, who averages almost 11 points a game has scored 16 touchdowns this season. Hasn't seen it down, has not carried the football. So Donovan Williams in his stead has run for 212 yards, three touchdowns, more than what he has done over the course of the entire season. Jalen Overstreet's added a couple of touchdown runs and that's provided the 55-0 lead at the break for the visitors from Huntsville. So we've seen uh, both coaching staffs shuttle in some different players. The Bearcats have gone two and three deep. The Huskies hoping to make a few adjustments at the half and uh, have a little different second half. And this their final game of the season on Senior Day on a very cold afternoon at Husky Stadium here in Houston. 
Well, and I, I think we've talked about this before. When you get in these kind of situations, you put a couple of zeros on that scoreboard. You forget about that 55 sitting up there, and you try to win the second half. And take it to Beechnut. Why not? That's a local street right here in the Houston area. Go deep, in other words. <laughs> B.J. Yeah. Kelly back deep again. That's good to see. That. Yeah, you play for some moral victories, really. And the score right now, it's going to be a tough hill to climb. You want better performance. You want a good second half. And uh, playing against a good measuring Five stick. Game, team, number 44. Five Do we have a penalty already? Penalty on the <laughs> kickoff? That hasn't been kicked yet. <laughs> well, that's a new one. Yeah, I haven't seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> Ross Smith, Mark Warner, Greg Donham, Spencer Steltris, and Keith Claiborne, Kurt Wisniewski, Robert Hunghel, and uh, they are the officials here today, the referee being Ross Smith. <laughs> Just called a penalty <laughs> on the kickoff before the ball was cut loose. So here we go, Swim Barrigo will pound one that will go near the pylon, but it missed by a yard or two, in fact, at the two-yard line. So this will be the best starting field position here this afternoon for HBU. Really great kick coverage all day long by all Sam Houston down State, down. and they've had some practice at that, and a big leg from Swim Barriga, but back to five yards. He kicks one out of bounds, and the Huskies will start with the football first here in our third quarter. Darius Baker back on the field again at the quarterback position, and B.J. Kelly will be lining up behind him. You LSU fans know that when you kick the ball out of bounds, they start from the 40-yard line <laughs> after last week and that yeah. uh, disaster in the last minute against Alabama. So it takes the momentum away, doesn't it? Oh, it does. So that's where the Huskies will have it. And B.J. Kelly back in there with Kadarius Baker again making the start here this afternoon. You see those two gloves. He's wearing in a cold afternoon. B.J. Kelly love watching this kid play. As he rumbles forward for a few extra yards. And there's going to be a lot of backups in the game now for Sam Houston State, including Eric Humphrey, a defensive tackle out of Dallas, who made that play. Yeah, he was trying to strip that ball away. And B.J. Kelly, nice job hanging on to it, picking up some decent yardage there, about seven yards. Good first down carry. HBU got into Sam Houston territory on one drive to about the 48, but then they went in reverse, had to punt from their half of the 50. Looking for some momentum here in our third quarter. Play clock inside five. Baker needs to snap it with three. He'll cut one loose and being chased and being sacked and thrown backwards. And it was the same man again who came up to get him, Eric Humphrey. Sacked by number 58, Eric Humphrey. Yeah, Eric had a lot of strength there. He kind of throwing around Kadarius Baker like a rag doll, and Baker's got some good size to him. But to look at Humphrey, comes right up the middle. That's a frightful sight if you're Kadarius Baker. <laughs> so a third and 12, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm saying that 53 is a bit generous. Someone put a thermostat near a space heater on the sideline when they got that reading. <laughs> well, that wind and that light rain makes it feel like 43. Our camera people, they came in for some uh, time away from outside at the break. Good pass on the boundary and a completion to Ethan Fry for a first down. A well-timed play and a nice gain for HBU to move the sticks. Yeah, they came in. They were looking a little blue, huh? Oof, like they had spent uh, the night outside on the street because <laughs> They needed to warm up before they went out for the second half. So the Huskies in a Bearcats territory. Boy, that snap gets away from Baker and he has to land on top of it. That came out like a ground ball. Not even straight back towards Baker. It was to his left and he had to scramble and jump on top of it in order to keep it from being a turnover because Baker had a couple of INTs in the first half. Yeah, and immediately Jacob Aguilar kind of taps his own chest saying, my bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> he kind of, just every now and then, you, you, know, you forget. We don't talk about the center too often until there's a bad exchange usually, you know, and sometimes you just got to be careful how you center the ball. So it's a loss of 10. So again, once HBU got into Sam Houston State territory, they see the play go backwards. Quick pass to Darian Lazard. Unable to kind of pop that bubble screen loose, so he will get a couple of those yards back, but it will be third and long. 
Kind of a sure play here. Nice little quick yards. throw as uh, Lazard was open. Picks up about three or four yards there. Still got to go 18 for the first down here. Alonzo McMillan, kid out of Oklahoma City, made the stop. So it's third and 16. Huskies have to reach the Sam 39. First drive here in our second half. Four-man rush, Baker with time to throw. Lazard going backwards to try and go forwards, and that didn't work. That play was strung out by Heidman. Yeah, so it'll be fourth down in a punting situation here for HBU. A couple of completions there to Lazard, though. Trying to look at the positives there. Lazard, of course. When he first came here, I remember Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine had him listed as a quarterback. We thought he was going to be a QB, and then he ended up switching over to wide receiver. And uh, he's tried to make the most of his opportunities here. Guzman with another good punt. Fair catch will be made inside the 20 at about the 19. Fair catch will get it for their first possession here in the second half, leading 55 to nothing. Yeah, I like what Sheely was saying earlier about you know the senior day, and he mentioned that he he hopes that the players learn that it's not just about the wins and losses and all that, but it's about that brotherhood and that uh, companionship and learning, to, you're getting to know each other as players. Uh, it's you know, it's like you'll know these guys for the rest of your life. You know, it's like a fraternity. These football players. And they're at the ground floor of a foundation, if you will, of building a program. Listen, you're going to take some knocks when you do that, but you hope that you establish that foundation for many years to come. Different running backs now will get a chance to carry the football in the second half for Sam Houston State. Page four. <laughs> yeah, some of the, uh, we're at the part where uh, Sam Houston State's got some players on the field that aren't even showing up on the roster. <laughs> Was that really Shin the kicker? Who carried the football, 37? To double check here. He is a 37, but. Uh... <laughs> and the Bearcats up near another first down. Reception made by Stephen Williams for Sam Stephen Houston. Williams that time on the reception. The ball crosses the 30 yard line. That's where you know, Sam Houston State's thinking about there. making a, a deep playoff run. They want to win the Southland Conference. They've got a 5 1 record. They've been on fire lately. Trying to get some other players some, some playing time right now. And, and no question about it, important to get their quarterback in and get him some good reps. Don King, the third here. Terrell Brown, the third, and a host of Huskies will stack up the ball carrier after a pickup of about three yards on the play. Now every collegiate team out there who loses a starting quarterback knows the importance of getting the backup QB some reps. and. Uh, Never want to take any chance, especially if you get this far into the season when a lot of players are getting injured. Speaking of, looks like Prince Sam is down right now, kind of slow to get up. Clock stopped with that injury timeout, 10.26 to play here in our third quarter. As you see, Sam come to the sideline trying to walk that sting off. He's also out of Allen, Texas. Don King the third will keep. He's going to be dropped. Unable to get outside. Tackle was made by Jonathan Buffin, the safety from Cedar Hill, and he'll force a third down and five. And the Bearcats, even with some of their second and third teamers, will try and go up tempo. See the Huskies pushing a lot of people, at least showing a lot of defenders in the box before they back off. Well, it's your offense, and everyone needs to learn how to run it properly. Stephen Williams again. Williams reaching near the boundary. Cody Monk here had him around the feet. Williams, will he be short? Yes, by about half a yard, so it's fourth down. And we'll see Lachlan Edwards possibly come on to punt. Keep in mind, Edwards, one of the best punters in all of football, but he hasn't been used today. Maybe the best pro prospect for Sam Houston State has it been on the field? Edwards averages 44 yards a kick, which is seventh best 
in the country. But I believe it's Donovan. Yeah, it's Brad Donovan at a rock wall, Heath. So Donovan will kick. Well, he rockets one to about the five, and it will bounce into the end zone. That's a kick, 61 touchback yards, but a Husky touchback take over first down for in HBU. 8.49 to play here in our third quarter. Sam Houston State with all kind of depth. You know, the backup hunter, 61 yards. <laughs> <laughs> we'll step aside, 55 nothing. Fair catch. A few fans from Huntsville made the trip over. The cheer squad for HBU trying to stay warm on this Saturday afternoon. Get word at the break that it was Corey Eidelberg who was carrying the football on that previous drive, and he was not on your roster, Jeff Power, <laughs> so you were correct. <laughs> HBU with the football. A couple of times they've been able to penetrate Bearcat territory, but then they've gone backwards. So Baker still trying to find that one drive they can build on with some momentum here in this football game. In the old days, we'd say he's number one in your heart. That was the That's only right. number we had. <laughs> <laughs> Opportunity now for some different ball carriers for HBU. Jackie Robinson, Very Jr., Jackie a Pearland Robinson sophomore Jr. with the carry. That's his 30th rush of the season. Not a big guy, 5'8", 180 pounds. Chance, though, to get him some game experience against this good Bearcats defense. Yeah, Bibbins checks back out on the field now. Kind of lines up in that slot receiver position. Glad you brought up Bibbins. We mentioned him earlier. There's a guy that scored five touchdowns. He really had a connection going with Jonathan Fleming, quarterback who got hurt. Ian Nacho has that pass sail out of his reach. Bibbins a big guy though, Jeff, 6'5", 242 pounds. I'm wondering what his opportunities might be at the next level because he's got the body of a guy who could go help out an NFL team, whether it's on a practice squad or as a backup. Yeah, he's got a lot of confidence too. And uh, he, I just remember there was one particular play that kind of stands out uh, earlier this year. It was, it was to open the game. I believe it was against Abilene Christian. He caught one over the middle and just took it the length of the field for a touchdown. and. He showed that speed, but that desire and that, you know, that want to, as, we, as the coaches like to say. Yeah, he moved like a wide receiver with a body clearly like a tight end. Third and eight. Ian Nacho had that ball in his hands, and it got kicked loose. Ernest Payton, a Missouri transfer, also got his hand on it. And it's incomplete fourth down. So two different individuals had a chance at this football. You'll see it again here from the back. Yeah, Davis Avianacho, check this out. The ball actually will hit him in the back when he's laying on the ground right there. Of course, he had already been tipped. He wasn't aware where it was coming down, but Avianacho's out of Houston, played at West Side and also at West Texas A&M. Listed as a sophomore. Guzman will shank one a bit, see if he gets a friendly bounce. It'll hop out of bounds quickly. Bunt goes out of bounds. Inside the 40. It'll be Sam Houston's ball. That's where the Bearcats will have it from their 39. You know, if you're the Bearcats, you know, this is that time of year where they seem to turn it up a notch. It gets colder outside, and, and Sam Houston State starts rattling off victories. They look like they're primed to make a pretty good run this year, but they need to finish strong, and they've got Central Arkansas next week, and sure they wouldn't mind a southeastern Louisiana loss along the way here in the last two weeks. You know, that's not a gimme next week against the Bears. The good news for the Bearcats, they will have that game in Huntsville. There's a gain across the 45-yard line. Well, we, uh, of course, Central Arkansas, they've, they're known for that purple field that they have up there. and Great-looking uh, stadium there in Conway, Arkansas. They really took it to HBU earlier this year. 70 to nothing. King will keep that play well defended. Nothing on the boundary. Good defense by Allen. I beg your pardon, it was Buffin called his name on the previous drive, and Jonathan Buffin 
will force a third down. Watch this containment. Did not let King get outside. Forced him back in where he had some help. And uh, nothing there. Yeah, absolutely played perfectly right there. No question about it. That's, that's the way you do it. Just kind of string it out. Jonathan Buff, a great job out of Cedar Hill. Third and five. They have to reach the 49-yard line. Here comes the blitz and the pitch. And the second effort will bring a first down and much more for the Bearcats all the way to the HBU 35. On the carry for Sam That's Houston. assignment football right there on the defensive side. The and the play was kind of over pursued. Check out on the top of your screen here, kind of over pursuing it there. Number 48, Corey Hayes. Thought he had the right angle at first, but nice little cutback move. And Sam Houston stayed in business with another first down. Dechar Greer, he's a freshman out of Waco. So we've seen a couple of Waco running backs in this game. Looks like that's Idlebird back in there. Idlebird head over heels. A couple Very of yards shy of the marker. Yeah, they're about six deep in running backs. You were going to say the exact same thing that was about to come off my <laughs> lips. <laughs> they're going way deep <laughs> right now. Guys that haven't even carried the football this season getting conference experience. And there's a lot of time left. We just go inside six minutes here in our third quarter. King will try and throw, and his pass was incomplete. It skipped into the hands of Matla. Let me take a look at this one again and just see. If that, no, no argument right there. So uh, looks like it was probably bounced in. King's been low on a couple of those passes. And right now they're only throwing just to mix things up a bit. They're not trying to go downfield with big chunks. Third and four, little flip to the man racing out of the backfield and Josh Reynolds. Reynolds will do more than gain the first down. He almost had a touchdown. Knocked down the pylon, but he was marked out at about the two. Takes the ball down inside the five yard line to the two. Well designed play right there. Josh coming up a little gimpy there as he'll head towards the sideline, but showing you some speed. He makes this catch in stride. Cuts to the outside here, gets a good block. And look at the hit right there towards the end of the play. That was Josh a, Irwin. Yeah, Josh Irwin, nice little shot right there. Idlebird reaching for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown, Touchdown Sam. Houston and they will top the 60-point plateau. That was a pretty impressive drive right there with, uh, for the most part, backups and third stringers here for Sam Houston State. And, you know, for them, hey, this is a chance to, to get out there and play. You don't, can't expect them to let up. See our GoPro angle here. I like the, it. The goal post. Gives oh. you an idea how windy it is, too. <laughs> how fast that ball gets off the toe of <laughs> Swim Barriga and through the uprights. 62-0, Sam Houston State. Sixty-two-nothing, Sam Houston State with the lead here at Husky Stadium. And you know, Michael Wade, senior. He wants to see that goose egg stay up there. He's a uh, defensive player, safety for uh, Sam Houston State. Here's what he had to say about their defense this year. We haven't changed much uh, from last year. We have the same coach, Coach Collins. Uh, he's doing a tremendous job getting everybody on one accord. Everybody's on the same page. So I think this season will be a lot different. I remember that pick six pretty well right there last year against HPU and Sam Houston State in those all orange uniforms. But uh, their defense, I mean, you know, they put a zero up there on the other side of the board. and. That's going to become the one thing that the Bearcats are going to talk about on that sideline. I promise you, is keeping that zero up there. And it doesn't matter which wave of player or unit is in the game. It'll be a collaborative group effort today. So when Barry got, boy, he's got a big leg. He sends B.J. Kelly racing back into the end zone and wise to take a knee, and he will. He didn't want to, though, did he? <laughs> he was hoping to make a play. I know B.J. He wanted to come out right there, no question about it. A lot of effort just to track that football down. His fellow return man looked at him and kind of gave him the hands up, and then he had that leg like, you're crazy, I'm coming out. <laughs> That's the kind of player he is, though. He is so determined. 
thing you got to like about a guy like B.J. Kelly, I, I agree with you. He's out of Waco, 5'8", 180-pounder, freshman. I mean, you, you really could build a running game around this stable of running backs that they have between B.J. Kelly and Larry Day and uh, Craig Bell. I mean, they, they it's one of their strengths. Get a little bigger up front with that offensive line, and who knows. Darius Baker still taking the snaps out of the shotgun here. B.J. Kelly with another opportunity. Nothing fancy there, but he picks up five yards, maybe Kelly five and a half on first down. Yeah, trying to probably try to run some clock too. Just kind of get back to the basics of what, what's your game plan. Let's go back to it. Let's try to let's try to put together a touchdown drive. You know, this is one of those drives you could you know build on for next season. Well, I think you would see very excited sideline if they were able to complete one. There's some movement. Let's see if this is on the defense. I believe it may be. Darian Harris, 99, the kid from Arlington. Offsides, defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty resulting in a first down. I'm not sure why Harris jumped. Everybody was just kind of sitting there, and all of a sudden Harris just took off. I didn't see any kind of hard count, but could have been. Kind of hard to tell from up here. Where Chad Whitehead didn't even flinch. What's big number 99 was coming at him. That's discipline. <laughs> <laughs> Little option pitch to the short side of the field and well defended with the boundary as an assist by Sam Houston State. And there was Harris amongst the trio of tacklers for the Bearcats. And a pickup of just over four yards. Second down and six. Clock kind of winding down here in the third quarter, but. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they go back to the air here. They've gone up top looking for the big ball on a few occasions. Baker had a couple of picks in the first half. Haven't hit on one of those yet. This one out into the flat. Good for a first down. Well executed pass into the hands of Sean Willicks. He's a senior out of North Carolina. Yeah, Concord, North Carolina. Went a long way to find him. Showing you what he can do, making the great catch right there. Nice little route, too. Good pass by Kadarius Baker. Hauling that one in. Tackled in space by the safety, Forsberg. So, again, just shy of midfield. That's been about the area where they've had some problems penetrating any further. But B.J. Kelly for a few yards into Bearcat territory before Heidman, the linebacker from the Clear Lake Houston area with the stop. I tell you, man, B.J. Kelly, he runs hard, but he goes down hard, too. <laughs> when they tackle him, they just throw him down. We've seen this throughout the season because he runs so hard. Those feet are constantly moving and probably often off the ground, so he goes down quickly when you hit him. Well, he has some thrust. You're right. Second and seven for HBU. Three minutes to go here in our third. B.J. Kelly trying to break one. Heidman planted him Kelly. right at the 45. And, and the 45 Jeff, I might be mistaken. I think this is the deepest HBU three. has been in Sam Houston territory in this entire game. Yeah, I think you're right. They haven't been beyond the U, if you will, and they're on it right now <laughs> on the HBU logo here. But if they want to stay on the field, they need three plus yards here, third and three. And it might be two down territory, but they just as soon get it right here. See if B.J. Kelly gets another chance. Wesley Lewis, the receiver here, lined up to the right. He is the big guy, the 6'6 wide receiver with man coverage. And he's the one who's being targeted. Lewis down the boundary using the height, and he could not bring it in. That's some pretty good coverage by the Bearcats, uh, Pierce. Yeah, Wesley Lewis at a Rouse High School in Leander ISD. Pretty well thrown ball right here from Baker. Lewis got to find a way to haul that one in right there. If you get a hand on it, you got to bring it in. That's the, kind of the old rule of thumb. I give Baker credit. He put this ball high enough where the height advantage of Lewis would come into play. If he can't catch it, no one else will. Yeah, good point. And Lewis, a nice job of keeping his, his feet in bounds, but uh, just couldn't haul that one in. Huskies will go for it. This stadium may be as loud as it has been all day. Home fans want to see a first down. Baker back. Here comes the rush over the middle. It's Lewis, and the ball Ooh. squirted loose. I don't think he had it. 
the official got knocked down. It was right at the marker, but Lewis could not hold on, and the Bearcats defense will get off the field. Well, he got knocked down. The official did. He had a chance to really see if that ball was caught or not, and then it squirted out. <laughs> but uh, see it again. This one one more time, yeah. The question is, does he have the two feet down before he loses it? I don't think so. That's just real good coverage, and that's back-to-back -back plays. Contrez Pierce has been involved on Lewis, and Pierce is only 5'9", Jeff. He's going up against a 6'6 wide receiver. Give him credit for being right there in his grill. Yeah, the man that was closest to it, the official, of course, knocked down, so he couldn't really tell you what he couldn't see it. Idlebird will race now into Harry HBU Idlebird. territory. That's a pickup of eight on first down. We go inside two minutes to play here in our third quarter. It's 55 nothing at the break. Bearcats had a long scoring drive for the only points for either team here in this uh, second half. Don King the thirds had a lot of playing time today. He'll keep and then pitch. Idlebird with a cutback. That play didn't look like it had many I yards as a possibility, and yet it's good Houston enough for a first down five or six on the play. When I guarantee you these defensive coaches for HBU Houston right now, Brent Biesemeyer and Aaron Fletcher and Burl Jordan, I mean, this is a pride factor right now. You realize that Sam Houston State's kind of had their way with you, but you want to try to stop the bleeding here in the second half. And you're, you're getting a look at your future, too. You're looking at your own depth and seeing who guys who could be stepping up for you in the future. King got a little air on that pass intended for Reynolds. Mascot war. Yes. <laughs> Bearcat in the Husky. Bearcat looks like he's ready to pounce. Yeah, he's kind of taunting a little bit, isn't he? I'm going to throw a taunting flag on him. 15 yards. Huskies would take the mark off. Not too many penalties in this game. That's one of the positives. You know, and the two picks <laughs> by Baker were not good throws, but those were really the only mistakes we've had from the penalty slash turnover category. Second and 10, Idlebird working the left side of the line, allowing that hole to develop and he'll pick up maybe five on the play, bringing Idlebird up a third and five. Maybe so one more snap or so, yard. maybe two plays, depending on we'll what will transpire here in our third quarter. You know, I think worth noting, uh, no HBU player lost eligibility last year in that seven game schedule, so they're all kind of technically freshmen all over again. 30 redshirt freshmen, 27 true freshmen through this year's class. I mean, it's just, that's a daunting task. You put a bunch of 18-year-olds up there against a team that's been playing for the national championship the last couple of years at this level. Someone's got to find the quarterback first. Don King the third, angling to the left, staying on his feet. Turf Monster got him at about the 11. Very Huge King. gain from the backup QB who's going to end up playing probably nearly three quarters before this down game is all line. said and done. Down and, 10 for the Bearcats. and I think there's no question you want to try to get the reps in for your quarterbacks and get a chance to see what they can do. I wouldn't be surprised if even HBU goes for the backup quarterback here in a moment as well. Why not? Sam will not snap it again here in the third quarter, so they will allow the final seconds to tick off and we'll flip the field, head to the other direction. One more quarter to play. One more quarter in the HBU season. Sam Houston State leading 62-0 on the mark again. One final quarter to play here at Husky Stadium. The day has turned into night. Talked a lot, Jeff, about the Southland Conference this year and so many power teams. You could make an argument. Really, those top five teams all still alive for the FCS playoffs. What a jumbled race for the time being. Yeah, it's absolutely wide open, as you can see. I mean, if Southeast Louisiana or Sam Houston State should fall, then you're looking at five teams. And uh, But I think right now, Sam Houston State, going into their game against Central Arkansas, might be playing the best football out of all these teams in the standings here. Or Southeast Louisiana lost to SFA, but they've uh, they've kind of bounced back and had some some good wins here in a row as well. Of course, Southeastern has a big game today. In fact, we'll give you a score update after this next play, hosting McNeese. A couple of weeks ago, it looked like McNeese was on their way to the postseason. 
And a rumble by Greer into the end zone for the touchdown. Greer on the touchdown. So Greer gets his points. And he took that one in from 11 yards out. And the Bearcats on the verge of getting 69 points. And Greer just took that one right up the gut for the touchdown. We'll take a look at it after the extra point here. HBU located on the southwest side of Houston off of Fondren and Highway 59, if you know the area. Another extra point from Swimberiga. One play, seven seconds into our fourth quarter, 69-0. Take yep. another look at this rush. Too easy, Jeff. Yeah, big hole right up the middle and uh, untouched all the way into the end zone, and uh, Greer making it look pretty easy right there. Score update, though, from Southeastern. They lead McNeese 14-9 in the third quarter, so that may be a case where Bearcat fans will watch the scoreboard, hoping that McNeese can come back and win that game, giving Sam Houston State a shot at the undisputed conference championship should they win next week at home against Central Arkansas. And McNeese is another one of those teams, kind of like Sam Houston State. They've been sort of the class of the of the Southland Conference. Uh, we had one of their games earlier this year when they played Incarnate Word. And, you know, you, you go back to some of their rich history as well. Um, I remember a year in the, I want to say, 76 season where they played Tulsa. And this, they played over in Shreveport, Louisiana, the old Independence Bowl over there. And they got a chance to, to kind of crescent that bowl. They, they were the first team to play there and uh, walked out of the field that day, had 18 starters that didn't get to play that day. Oh boy. And they still won the game over Tulsa. <laughs> Little trickeration and the uh, Huskies lucky to get that football back. There was a pitch to Wallace. Wallace had a fall on the ball football. By Wallace. Huskies will have the ball back. Meanwhile, Sam Houston State just under 700 yards total offense. So HBU going to the bag of tricks and that one nearly backfired. Well, B.J. Kelly's been probably their most effective player. 12 rushes for 74 yards with a net of 70. Just had that 19-yard run, about averaging almost six yards a carry. Darian Lazard with three catches for 17 yards, but Sam Houston State's numbers are ridiculous. We'll go into those here in just a moment. <laughs> Terrence Peters, the running back with Kadarius Baker in this sequence. Adjun also lines up as an offset fullback in this formation. Beginning from their own eight. Terrence Peters will carry off the right side, picks up a pair. Stats pretty impressive though, Jeff, after three quarters. Yeah, Donovan Williams, 13 carries, 212 yards and three touchdowns. Kind of note that Southland Conference officials. <laughs> Jalen Overstreet, eight carries, 130 yards, two touchdowns. Both of those players averaging 16 yards a carry. That's what happens when you have a couple of 80 yard runs. <laughs> Pad the stats. Kind of forgot about Jalen Overstreet being at Sam Houston State. That's gonna be a great weapon for them here in the perhaps in the postseason. Terrence Peters escorted out of bounds after he picked up the first down. So a nice gain by Peters. By Terrence Peters Jr. is good for a Husky first down of the 24 you know, Jared Johnson line. over 100 yards passing, couple of touchdowns, had himself a great game in the first half, throws a crisp ball. Now, I've, I've seen the improvement, you know, from the last time we saw them last year. He, he was playing in the fourth quarter against HBU last season. placing their talented quarterback, Brian Bell. Yeah, Timothy cool. Flanders, another guy no longer in the program. Sure, great running back. Peters will get a couple of yards. I know Coach Keeler of Sam was concerned that maybe his youth and his focus on his team, they just weren't quite finishing games the way they needed to, and he's been after his team to play clean games and to finish. Well, that will not be a problem today. They've been clean even though you know, sometimes when the second and third units come in, you start to get penalties and mistakes. That has not been the case for the Bearcats. I'm sure that'll please the head man. Yeah, he's got a good looking team. I mean, and I don't know what all, you know, the fans, what you expect when you have a brand new coach, new system, players have to learn new plays, new playbook. I mean, to be at the top of the conference with one game remaining, that's pretty impressive. They're gonna be six and one after today. Second and nine. 
the pass was not hauled in. You know, one of the keys this year, they're winning the turnover battle. They've created 14 turnovers, including seven fumbles and seven interceptions. They're balanced on their turnovers, too. <laughs> Look at the play right here and Henderson got to hang on to that. Yep. You're going to get hit anyway. You might as well catch it. We've not seen Bibbins in quite some time. I'm wondering if he got dinged in the first half as the uh, mascots rumble again. It's kind of like the tail coming out. That's classic for both of them. <laughs> <laughs> they might be the warmest individuals in the stadium today. Third and nine. Baker able to sidestep a tackler. That's a lateral. That may end up being a rush for Terrence Peters. I think he threw that backwards. Almost acts kind of like an option play almost, you know, just bait the man towards you and then fire it to the outside. Doesn't really matter if you throw it underhanded or, or just a regular pass. See this again. See if we can tell from this angle. He's at about, uh, well, no, that Slightly might be forward. forward. That yeah, might a be a yards. pass completion. Yeah, that's a pass. So a fresh set of downs for HBU. Clock rolling again once they spot the football. Wilson one in motion. Peters will carry. Well, even Terrence Peters races speed, through that huh? line. Yeah, he can get through that hole quickly too. Corey Hamlet, the safety, senior from Jacksonville, Texas, chopped him down. There hasn't been a shortage of running backs in this uh, <laughs> on this field today with both teams. I think that's the strength of both teams. You know, you often, you see how important a good running back is when he gets injured and he's out, then you realize how good they are and how important they are to your team because they make a lot of yards that uh, backups can't always produce. Absence makes the uh, heart grow fonder when <laughs> yes. you have those big play guys and they're not in there. Tough pitch for Peters. He was lucky just to catch that football. He was flipped pretty good with some containment from Jeremy Forsberg, a safety. We've called his name a few times this evening. Huskies just had a big third down conversion to get a fresh set of downs. Now they're looking at a third and five. 55 nothing at the break. Both touchdowns, of course, in the second half have been tacked on by the Bearcats and the Huskies Trying to find something to put in the positive category here in this contest against this good team. Baker rushing backwards, kind of lobbed that one up, but it was deflected by the Bearcat on the boundary. That was Hamlet. And it was Bibbins who was back in the game. Sam Houston State averaging about 433 yards a game on offense. And uh, that, that ranks fifth in the Southland Conference, I might add. <laughs> but that, that number's going to go up today. They might jump up a few spots. This is a, a conference that has a lot of offense, and you, you do see some big numbers. I think this year with the disparity between the, the upper echelon teams that have been here and been established and the, some of the newer teams, you get these kind of wild point differences, uh, differential and high scores. Ninth punt of the day for Guzman. Boy, this is a rocket. He's had a good, he's had a good game today. How about this punt has a chance to be downed at the one and it trickled into the end zone. Hey, look, he's, he kind of shook his head like, come on, guys. <laughs> See, that's how the game of football is. You know, you have a bad punt, and somehow it gets pinned inside the four. You have a great punt, and it comes out to the 20. <laughs> we'll step aside, 10.41 to play. It's been all Bearcats here this afternoon in Houston. Nothing. Sam Houston State here in our fourth quarter. You know, Keyshawn Hill, we haven't had a chance to see him here today. He is a senior uh, out of Klein High School. Talked about wanting to come home, but he also alluded to the fact that he's got a little son, a big fan at home. Here's his thoughts. Just perseverance and, um, time, you know, just patience. Uh, they taught me a lot of things, so really just to, just as a better man, you know, just to help, help me, help me with how to deal with my kids and how to just, to, you know, just grow. 
patience, that's a good word when you have a youngster at home. Yes, all parents, patience is important. <laughs> Greer had a touchdown earlier in this game. He was not going to get away from Taylor Thompson on that play. But, you know, Keyshawn was saying that, um, you know, he's had to grow up. He's had to become a man. You know, having children will, will make you grow up pretty quickly, especially for a, a young player who's he's playing college football and he has to deal with parenting as well. Going to class, trying to do well academically, play football in a good program, and then, of course, uh, the responsibilities of being a parent. He promised me his number one fan is watching right now, so a little shout out. <laughs> Inside, 10 minutes to go in the game. Don King the third has been in there really since the beginning of the second quarter. And the give to Greer for a few yards up across the 25. A lot of blue shirts surrounding. And the, the official Volker. goes down again. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a rough day. Yeah, that's twice in the last couple series here. Taylor Holmes made the tackle, but you see the smile on the official. He said, quit tackling me. Yeah, that's Mark Warner out there, the umpire. He's kind of stretching that back out. Oh. <laughs> Looks like he might have played some football in his day, but uh, that's no fun when you're not wearing pads, and the kids who are at 19, 20, 21 are. Especially when you've been out there for three quarters, you know. Get a little stiff, and all of a sudden get run over. Third and five for the Bearcats. Don King the third wants yeah. a timeout. Two seconds remain on the play clock when he burned the first timeout here in the second half. Timeout. And some coaching going on on the Bearcats sideline. There's Casey Keeler with the blue pullover and the headset up. He's uh, letting his offensive guys talk things over with their unit. 69 nothing. Score in the fourth Team quarter. Sam, yeah, Houston Sam Houston State, State coaching staff, Casey Keeler doing a great job. Of course, their offensive coordinator, Phil Longo, has got so many weapons to work with. He's done a great job, great game plan here. And also, just across the board, uh, Brad Sherrard, the uh, defensive coordinator as well, his co-defensive coordinator, along with uh, Mike Collins. And uh, Mike Collins, he's been around here for a while, one of those coaches that's kind of been retained on the staff. And I think that's important too, having that uh, continuity. Especially when you talk about recruiting ties. Sure. Continuity to the kids that are coming back. And even though there were not many returning starters and there were a lot of young kids in Huntsville, they knew the talent that was still there. Sure. Good coaching, buy-in, and you could get guys that could put forth a season that will see Sam Houston State go to six and one in league play, seven and four overall. You know, I was talking with uh, Jack Alvarez, the head coach over at Ennis, and he said when he came in, the first thing he did is he realized there was a couple of coaches who had been on their staff when Sam Harrell was coaching Ennis when they had won the three championships. And once he picked their brain, he realized, I need to keep these guys. They're really smart. They know what they're doing. And I don't care that they weren't on my coaching staff before. I like these guys. And I think that's kind of the philosophy that, you know, maybe KC had when he came here to Sam Houston State. You get to know them, you like them, keep them on. Why, Why not? not? Yes, I agree. First and 10 for the Bearcats from their 31. Quick pass into the boundary. We talked about some new running backs into the game, also some new individuals with a chance to catch the football. That's Allen, the wide receiver from Baytown. So he's back here in the Houston area, able to make a play. This has been a really good season for the uh, Houston area as far as high school football, so that really will translate into a lot more talent, a lot more recruiting uh, fertile ground here in the Houston area, you know, teams to watch out for. I wouldn't be surprised if two or three teams out of the Houston area win state championships this, this fall coming up here in the postseason now that we're in the playoffs. It's a fun time of the year, high school playoffs in full force nearing the end of the regular season in college football and even college basketball beginning this weekend. Upsets already in college basketball. You never know. You better come ready to play in collegiate athletics these days. <laughs> There's Greer with the carry. The Bearcats, in fact, had a noon tip-off to their season on a Friday in Huntsville. They played uh, the early game, kind of like the baseball opening day when you run it out there for an afternoon game. And Steve Maniacci on at half with uh, you, Jeff, talking about the basketball team looking forward to bigger and better things this year here at HBU. Yeah, it's always been a real strength here, the HBU basketball team, both the men and the women. Gain of six on that previous play. Right at the marker on another completion. In fact, it'll probably be good enough for a first down. It is 
the same wide receiver, DeMarty Allen. And there in the coverage was Derek Broussard, the freshman from Beaumont. First down and 10 for Sam Houston at the 36. Next time the Bearcats snap, it'll be first and 10. We'll be inside seven minutes to play in the game. HBU will finish their season one and seven in conference play. That one win here at home on homecoming against Nichols. Two and nine overall. A couple of close calls early in the year that did not go their way. And then they've had a tough schedule here in the second half. Idle Bird trying to get some yards on the corner, and it was Cody Monkier, one of those there defensively. A marker Idleberg came flying in. Question on the play. Jonathan Buffin also involved in that play, but we'll get the indication on the marker. Maybe a face mask, I'm wondering. You know, I think worth noting also is uh, most of these HBU players have gone the distance. You know, there, haven't, there hasn't been a lot of substituting on their side of the ball, and, and Sam Houston State's had a lot of subs in there, getting some fresh players out there. Usually you see a, the, the difference. Teams getting kind of worn down when they get into the fourth quarter. And here comes a substitute right now for HBU. And uh, that looks like uh, Trey Gardner coming in. Personal Sam foul, Tony Roosevelt. Number 47 of the offense, blocking out of bounds. 15-yard penalty, still first down. Well, you can't block out of bounds. Josh Lyons, the tight end. Copperus Cove will draw the penalty and a 15-yard mark off. some sprinkles starting to fall outside as the lights have taken full effect. The day game has turned into a night game here at Husky Stadium. First and 25 for Sam. One of the few things today that has not gone right for the Bearcats. You know, I think, uh, think about the fact, Brett, that Sam Houston State has gone so deep in the postseason the last five years, let's say. I mean, that's all those extra practice opportunities and extra games just to get better at their craft. And I think it makes you a better team. You know, and more visibility, more recruits can see you. Just another month of playing football that you get over the other teams in the conference that don't make it. It's a great point, and depth becomes very critical. And I'll come back to that after this carry by Idlebird. He wants another score. This is going to put the Bearcats over 70 points as he races to the end zone from 54 yards. Heidelberg just took off into the raindrops there and just all the way down the field for a touchdown. That was a great looking run. You know, those are designed plays. You know, you're trying to put your team in a position where if you can get the defensive backs and the secondary and the linebackers out to the side and then just run it right up the middle, that's how those big holes break free. See the rain blowing sideways, but the kick is right down the middle. Philadelphia 76ers were in town last night. It's 76 nothing Bearcats in Houston this evening. Six minutes to play from H-Town. Yeah, the Houston Baptist University soccer team won a championship here, the Southland Conference Tournament. Be, they win that game over in Lamar. Just how about that? I mean, an opportunity here. They battled uh, Stephen F. Austin, won the game. And there's a kickoff right there, right on cue. But uh, what a great victory there for the HBU girls soccer team. From a kick to a kickoff, yeah. and Wallace dropped at the 20. And good sign of progress here at HBU. And it's not just football, though that gets the bulk of the attention around these parts, but a lot to talk about here on campus. Today, though, it's been a lot to talk about for the Bearcats. They lead 76 to nothing, and HBU still looking for that one drive they can kind of the hang their hat on. Please correct the score to 76. The extra point was good. <laughs> really? <laughs> now, from where Fans I sit, I can't, I can't see the uh, visitors' point total, but 76 put up on the board. Jeff, you were talking about the postseason and the Bearcats going deep and uh, what that's meant for extra practices and reps and such. It also requires depth, and we're seeing a lot of players get playing time today. If you're going to go all the way to the championship game, it could be a 16-game season. 
You know, I know in the uh, FBS level, there's excitement around a four-team playoff, and there's talk, you know, why not make it an eight-team playoff as Jackie Robinson carries. You start to get into that number and quantity of games. It gets a little scary, but these kids at the FCS level, if Sam is so fortunate again, you're going to play 15, 16 games without really a break. That's a lengthy schedule. Yeah, and, you know, one of the things that um, I, I think that's been good at this level is uh, – They've tried to give the teams a little time off between their last semifinal game and then the championship game. It used to be sometimes you'd play on a Saturday and the championship might be the following Friday or Saturday or it'd just be so you only had that one week to prepare. Now they give them a couple weeks off to kind of get ready for it. But you played by that time 15 games already as uh, Jackie Robinson Jr. carries again no gain. It'll be about third and 10. And there's an injured Husky down on the field. Might be the backup center. Clock stopped with five and change to play. You know, HVU last year in that development season, they were three and four. And they do have the two wins this year, but uh, obviously beating Nichols was kind of the highlight of the season. And on homecoming, as Steve Maniachi alluded to earlier, the athletic director, but let's go and take a look at some other scores here across uh, the Southland Conference. As uh, you see, Southeast Louisiana leading McNeese 14 to nine in the fourth quarter. How about Stephen F. Austin? All they can handle with Abilene Christian gets a one point game, 35-34. And then the other games a little bit later on tonight, Lamar and Incarnate Word and Northwestern State taking on Nichols. We might check back at the end of this broadcast on that Southeastern McNeese game. Kyle Tomasi, the Backup center is being assisted off the field. There's a young man also from Pearland. Yeah, you hate to see that because it's there's five minutes left in the season in a game that is obviously out of uh, out of hand. So just just a kind of a tough break. One of those things. No one trying to roll up on the leg or anything. It just happens in this contact sport. Adam Beck, by the way, is now in a quarterback. Wondering if we might see Beck, freshman from Frisco. He's going to run the football. And he ran right into a wall of Bearcats, including Kyle Heitman. Number 17, Adam Beck in the game for HBU. You know, you think about Brian Bell, who uh, was the quarterback that had to be relieved by Jared Johnson towards the end of last year when he got hurt. Bell owns, like, all these passing records at Sam Houston State, and yet Jared Johnson came in and filled in admirably when he had to late in the season. And that's why it's important for players like Don King the third to get in these reps because you just never know. You never know when it's going to be your number call to get out there on the field. This will put Guzman into double figures and punts today. He's done a fine job. Probably would have been happy not to be quite as busy. This is a lower kick. See if he gets the bounce. He will, and it's going to stay in bounds for a period of time until our official fields it inside the 25. At the 25-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 for Sam Houston. You know, Casey Keeler was uh, telling me that uh, when Delaware had made it to the 2007 and 2010 championships, again, they didn't get that rest, and he, he thought that was just really a big change that had to happen, and he was glad to see it take place. But he also alluded to the fact that he thinks the Southland Conference will get three teams, maybe even four this year, uh, at, to the next level. And uh, it, it just gets to a point where, you know, there's – it's a big it's a big league it's a big conference you got a lot of teams playing over here and it's top heavy right now you've got some really good quality teams at the top we've had two penalties on blocking action out of bounds today that's a new all-time high and football be marked inside the uh, 15. but we had a five-yard penalty to open the third quarter to, on a kickoff that hadn't been kicked yet that's right <laughs> you know going back to your statement though i agree with coach keeler and there's a good look at uh, KC, he's talking with his assistants right now. This league deserves three, maybe even more bids. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, there's eight teams that get buys. There's eight games in that opening weekend. So you're talking about 24 teams, 24 entries, and there are plenty of automatic entries into that tournament. So it's hard, in other words, to get three or four bids, but uh, this league deserving. 
And you know, the players kind of talk about Keeler because uh, they like the fact that he he's a guy who actually played, and he played for Delaware. He was a linebacker. They won a national championship in 1979 when he was playing for the Blue Hens. And then he turns around and guides them to a championship as their head coach. And players respect that, you know, when you've kind of done it at, at both as a player and as a coach. Well, a lot of success on his resume. Today, a lot of his players have been able to get some playing time, some extra pushes after that play. And our official, you see him come in from the right side of your screen saying, no more, uh-uh, put you in timeout. Keeler was actually signed as a free agent with the Philadelphia Eagles in 1980 as a linebacker. And uh, you go back to some of those old Dick Vermeil days with the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> That was a nice season back in 1980. Wasn't that the year they played the Raiders in the Super Bowl? <laughs> You're going in the way back yeah. machine. Idlebird. A few extra yards. He will carry across the 20. In fact, looks like he has a first down. So the clock will stop as the sticks move at 222 to play. You know, Dick Vermeil was a player's coach, so emotionally charged out there. The players just love playing for him, kind of like a Bum Phillips in the Houston area. You know, when the players really love playing for you, they'll go that extra mile for you. You know, they'll find a way to, to get that extra burst of energy to give it all they've got. That's well, important. I like that comparison. <laughs> Saw a good special on uh, Earl Campbell the other day, and they were talking, you know, had Bum Phillips on there who's passed away about a year ago, of course, but uh, that relationship that Bum and Earl had together was a, that was a great great relationship city of Houston the love you blue days are a very fond time for the folks in the Bayou City right now the Bearcats just letting this play clock get as close to zero before they snap as possible they'll snap with five seconds Idleberg gets away from Dolan he's down the boundary he's gonna cut back he doesn't want to step out of bounds. Taylor Holmes Very has made a few tackles Idlebury. today, drops Boston him right at midfield. And Sam Houston on their way to possibly putting up 800 yards total offense today, maybe already past that plateau. Well, I think Sam Houston State's got a legitimate shot of maybe reaching another FCS title game up in Frisco. The old Toyota Stadium up there. It's a good looking park. Yeah, Look, the victory formation finally. <laughs> they'll take a couple of snaps and that'll do it. It looks like Southeastern on their to way to a win over McNeese today. That means we will have two teams at six and one in conference play with one more week to play. And of course, these Bearcats, they will have Central Arkansas and Huntsville for HBU. Their season will conclude with a record of two and nine overall, one and seven in Southland Conference action. Bearcats need to step it one more time. Jeff, it's been fun this year. I hope the fans have enjoyed these telecasts on Fox Sports Southwest and foxsportssouthwest.com. It's been good for the program to get some exposure around the state as they build towards brighter things in the future. Yeah, and I think watch for Houston Baptist next season. I think that the, the year of growth you'll see from this season into next will be twice as big as it was from last year to this season because now they're going to be able to get out. They're going to get out in front of the recruiting a little bit more. Their name is a little more branded out there. Folks in the Houston area know more about them. And I think some good things are headed the way of, the, of Houston Baptist. But no question about it, today the day belonged to Sam Houston State. It did indeed as the Bearcats improved to 6-1 at conference play, 7-4 and four overall. And they've been on quite a march since they started their season 1-3. and three. We're about ready to turn the lights out here at Husky Stadium. It was 55-0 at the half. It finishes 76 to nothing. And here are your final stats. And you look at the total yards, they did finish more than 800 yards, did the Bearcats. Yeah, 823 and only 222 through the air. That means 601 yards of rushing. And yes, no question about it, they've got a great stable of running backs. And uh, you know, it kind of starts with Donovan Williams, at least today, and Jalen Overstreet. And they aren't even your normal starters for this team. <laughs> Look at that. If my math serves me correctly, an even 1,000 yards total offense, but 823 come courtesy of the Bearcats as they roll here today 76 to nothing. Jeff, your final thoughts? 
Uh, it's been a great ride all year long with uh, Houston Baptist as far as covering them this season. And as far as Sam Houston State, I wish them well. They carry the banner of the Southland Conference and uh, hopefully, you know, to, to not only all the way to the championship, but maybe winning it this time around. And to Southeast Louisiana, who's right there with them. I mean, it sets up for a good final uh, weekend here in the Southland Conference as uh, those teams try to finish number one. Great job by our crew today. A special thanks to them and for Jeff Power. I'm Brett Dolan saying good afternoon, good night from Husky Stadium in Houston. Once again, our final score it was the Bearcats from Sam Houston State shutting out the HBU Huskies 76 to nothing. So long, everyone.